Guys, Gary G with you. Hey, uh, Alan Edwards checking in from Mississippi. Uh, Mike Davis, it's, uh, it's usually the player's uh, obligation because we can't keep up with everybody. And uh, they're not always familiar or they forget about the. Uh, so I will try to get you an update on the Roseville Albury Tyson Coonan match. Uh, I'll wait till this game is over. I don't want to walk by there and disturb them. If you look at some of the other matches, uh, you can see that there are the scores on those. You're on Facebook. If you go to YouTube, type in Extreme Pool Challenge. It'll either say live or day three. And um, you can see all the tables. There's five tables going on at one time. I mean, there are you know, downtime in between matches. So, but feel free to go there, and then you can see what's going on on some of the other tables all at the same time. You ever heard the phrase, you hit it too good? That's where it comes from right there. You got a kick at a ball hanging in the pocket. You hit it square in the nose and you or follow it right up. Right in the drink. your question. Roosevelt and Albury with the win 4 to something. Roosevelt does get the win. So uh, we jump over to the second table. We have this is Corey Kellogg at the table in the black shirt, brown shorts. His opponent, Tim Barker, to the right, standing with the cue in his hand. Black blue shirt, backwards hat. Tim Barker, two to one over Corey. Down on table 59, Rick Shaw versus Christian Vanegas. Knotted up at two apiece. Rick is a master. He has to go to five. Christian goes to four. So in the men's division, um, it is a race to four unless you're a master. In the ladies' division, it's a race to three unless you're a master. Then you go one more game. So that's uh, that's the scoop on that. So hit me up if you got any questions, if you're talking about any players, let me know what's going on.
All right, guys, come on, hit me up in the chat. Let's go. Marco Miller, he's uh, rooting for Boy Bolo. I, I'm guessing that was uh, Roosevelt, who did win. Alan Edwards uh, holding down Mississippi down in the Delta. We certainly appreciate you. Always enjoy seeing you in the chat with us. Come on down to Florida sometime. Come hang out, shoot some pool with us. We'll get you in these tournaments. If you play in any leagues, I mean, you're, if you play in any sanctioning body league, APA Valley, BCA, ACS, USAPL, you're good to sign up. Bring a team, come on down. Doesn't matter if you're a good team or bad team. They have formats uh, uh, and different divisions for the teams. Uh-oh, just watching Corey can close to scratching in that side. So, uh, come on down, Alan. Need a vacation anyway. Come on down to Florida. Beetle Bailey. How long is this tournament going to last? We will finish Sunday late afternoon into the early evening. Started Singles started Wednesday night. Um, singles will be pretty close to wrapping up. We'll have a couple singles matches uh, into tomorrow in between team events. So singles uh, Wednesday night, Thursday, and Friday. Team events start Saturday morning bright and early. So I expect to see all you guys here. So don't be out uh, late for tonight partying. Get you guys in here in the chat with me. Oh, Tim Barker.
Uh, Beetle, that's a good question. Tomorrow morning, uh, approximately 8 a.m. Team events that get started. Uh, might be a little bit after that when the kick match is called, depending on the players meeting and all the good stuff that goes on. But, uh, yeah, 8, 8.30 should be uh, pretty close to starting time.
Yeah, beautiful. I certainly appreciate you hanging out with us and, uh, you know, spread the word around Missouri, you know, if somebody's uh, having a big per uh, tournament, they, uh, they want something streamed with uh, multiple tables at one time, you know, give us a call. I mean, we are in Florida, so the gas is a, might be a little pricey, but you're certainly getting a bang for your buck when you have this many tables going at one time to watch. As long as it's not in February, December, January, February, when it's like probably really freaking cold up there. Don't need that aggravation in my life. I mean, if the check clears, we'll come up and do your, uh, you know, divorce party, permits. Uh, you know, we really don't care. Just send the check, and we'll be up there to stream it for you. You got issues at work? We'll stream it for you. Come on down. Send the check. We'll be there. feature matches it's probably a good time for us to uh, refresh everything and uh, so hang tight guys and we'll be back in a few minutes this is Gary G with Extreme Pool Challenge we're live in Kissimmee Florida for the 2022 West Coast Challenge 60 diamond tables around a thousand participants Several different divisions between singles, men's A and B division, eight ball and nine ball, women's divi singles division, eight, um, eight and nine ball, and then three divisions for the teams. So hang tight. we got a weekend full of great pool coming to you, so we'll be right back.
cold in here.
All right, guys, we got a ton of good matches just underway. We'll start with our feature match. Milton Strack at the table currently, trailing 1 0 to Christian Vanegas. Table 61, Tim Barron versus Jesus Boras. Real good matchup. Jesus from Port St. Lucie, uh, playing real strong lately. Tim from the Sarasota area. Beal, David Cantrell over on table 60. Roosevelt, Albury, and Brian Jacobs on 59. Roosevelt just came off the feature table, so we know he's uh, dialed in with a nice win. Brian Jacobs uh, just tortured me, so I know he's dialed in.
Milt, uh, he's definitely been struggling a little bit uh, this week. Usually rock solid player. He wanted me to run. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> he's probably the oldest player in the event, 79 years old. We do have a couple people well under their seniors. Did he call the nine? That's the question. You have to call the nine. If not, it spots up. And the opponent has the option to... Oh, he scratched. The opponent has the option to uh, shoot or put you back at the table. So with the scratch, it gives Milt ball in hand. Needs to come out on that two deep in the pocket and get down on the three. Nice shot there. <coughs> That's a nice shot also. The key has a little angles. No. Go forward and then go to the right. Yep. Oh, he overhit it. He's going to be okay. I mean, he has a very makeable shot, but certainly not where he wanted to be. Nice to see him the six go by the nine. Gonna send the cue ball over towards the side pocket. He has to be careful. Get a fortunate leave there. He did. Hmm. Christian looking. He's getting the jump cue out. Jesus Boras is going to take uh, the first game over here on table 61. I think he can, um, if he just comes straight across into the nine, or he's going to draw back, play the six in the same pocket. You know, it's amazing when your confidence is down, you're going to take the soft shot and try to roll it in. When you're feeling good, man, you're just going to spear it in the hole. All right, that's an excellent shot. Hits the nine full in the face, gets a real good shot on the six. Should be able to draw it to the back row where he's standing and back out. That's why I like drawing it to the back row and out. I, I can let the stroke out. Just a little hard, you still have a shot on the nine. You didn't lose, you're not losing the cue ball. Watch that side, watch this side. Wow, okay, nice shot there by Christian. Jumping out to a two game lead here, he makes this nine. My man, Will Smith, checking in with us. Will, you, you ain't coming down this week? Surprised I didn't see you in the single so far. Uh, 
Roosevelt, Albury, Brian Jacobs knotted up at one apiece. Nate Beal with a 1-0 lead over Dave Gantrell. Jesus Borjas with a 1-0 lead over Tim Barron. Christian Vanegas with a 2-0 lead over Milt Strack. Nothing on the break. I tell you, man, I was figuring this break out. The other guys were earlier were crushing it, making two and three. The guys before that weren't making anything. Milk nope, just trying to duck up. Slow his man down again a little bit. Try to take him out of stroke here. He's going to come probably with another jump shot. Tim Barron in the blue shirt on the second table. Black slacks. Coming to the table now, Jesus Borjas. All right, let's check out the jump here. Oh, man. Great hit. Almost drilled in in the pocket. Cue all runs around the table and gives me a nice, nice opportunity here. Just roll in, follow the one, come out. I'd like to get straight in on the two so you can stop. Six, so he has a very nice stop shot on the two. I kind of thought he was going to hit that one with a, some inside just to straighten it out. But he, he's okay here. Nice shot. A little shoot and stop on the three. This needs to go. You can actually shoot and stop on the four. Be straight in on the five. Be straight in on the six. Well, there's a lot of stop shots here. Oh, you just cannot do that, Milt. He, he's just, uh, he's out of focus. It's been a long couple days. You get uh, fatigued, you get a little tired. You lose your concentration. We've all been there. Christian is just jumping out of his chair with an opportunity to steal this game back. Boy, he hit that ball. Sweet. Sweet, sweet. Definitely hit the sweet spot on that one. Uh oh. Oh, <laughs> he babied it. He caught the rail, and you know what? You give Milt a couple opportunities like this, and he will pounce on you. He is an old veteran here. He knows some tricks. He ain't liking it. Back out of the pocket as well as he would like. But he's okay. Six and seven. Come back up for the seven. He should be all right here. Didn't get the speed he was hoping for. Let's see what happens. said it before, he hit one of the best shots I've ever seen in my life. It's uh, 
Somewhere in the archives on XBC. Five real kick on the eight ball. Look at this. Yeah, you know, that's yeah, you know, that's just fatigue and a lack of mental concentration. Anyway, five real kick on the eight ball in the US amateurs. In the finals, I believe. One of the most amazing shots I've ever seen. That was a nice little touch shot there by Christian. That, that's a tricky shot coming out of the ball. Object ball's kind of deep in the jaws of the pocket. And you got to come around the table like that. So he did that very, very nice. Obviously no stranger to the game. He's jumped out to a 3-0 lead over a very skilled, quality player in Milton Strack. Quick rundown, Roosevelt, Albury, Brian Jacobs nodded at two games apiece. Nate Beal leads David Cantrell 2-0. Jesus Boyd Haas leads Tim Baylor 2-0. In our future matchup, Christian Vanegas versus Miltstrack. Christian on the hill, 3-0. Hey, some of these matches, uh, tables turn pretty quick. One or two costly mistakes. And uh, you, before you know it, you're stuck in a bad hole. Just hoping to survive. Dry break, six sevens tied up, four threes tied up. Hmm. I wouldn't be surprised if Christian goes for the three rail combo and tries to park the cue ball behind the five. That's really like a free shot on the nine. The run out's not a, there's no gimme there. And it was kind of like a safety shot also. But he's playing it smart. He's not taking any flyers. He's not getting silly. Thinking, oh, you know what? I'm up 3 nothing. I'm just going to take this crazy shot. A lot of times that's when the tide will turn on you. Milton kind of jumped up on that a little bit. He's, he's a little disgusted with himself because he knows he plays a whole lot better than what we're seeing right now. Christian looking to see if the 2 9. Maybe play the one, come up from the two inside, get straight in on the three nine. I think that's what I would try to do. today. I feel his pain. Either way, it's still a good shot. I don't think Milton can see it, so he's going to have to kick at it. Three real kick. And that's, that's, that's experience instead of trying to go for the one railer. 
It's a much bigger ball coming this way. I mean, he missed it. He hit the seven. He came up short, but still, just knowing that the one rail kick from there was not as viable. safe shot because if you miss it the four is kind of going away you, you have a chance of getting hooked hooking them on the six you shoot the combo and you miss it it's a chance the four nine could hang up in front so it's a kind of a personal preference the shot itself the combo is probably a little bit more all right christian vanegas 4-0 over Milt's track. I know Milt is very disappointed. But as the old saying is, you can't win them all. Got to let somebody else get it once in a while and share the wealth. So hang tight, guys. We'll get another match on the future table here soon. They send it to us. Meanwhile, we'll give you the side angle. Here we go. We have Tim Barron. Table 61 trails Jesus Borjas by one game. Jesus up two to one. Tim uh, came in and helped me out uh, earlier or yesterday do some commentating and he usually gets in here with us. We certainly appreciate his help. He's a great guy. His wife, Tracy, uh, not here with him, but she's home tending to the dogs and playing with the pups. Nice shot there by Jesus. He might have hooked him. Well, no, he didn't. stop by he's a little quite frustrated and disappointed I mean well we've all been there we know so he said I never went on a stream table I can't imagine the cameras uh, make a difference to him he's been doing this for so long and seeing all the shakes bakes moves hustles scams cons <laughs> And all we're doing is watching to Big Nate Beal in the red shirt, third table in at the table. Leads two games to one over David Contrell.
Hmm, Tim trying to juice the one ball a little bit and get down table. Alright, big opportunity for Tim Barron here. He's just scratching. Four balls on the table, should have any issues uh, getting out here. Jacobs and Roosevelt Elbury. There's 3-3 three, three and the patch is over, so I'm not sure how that turned out. Meanwhile, we got uh, a couple good matches. Nate Beal, David Cantrell knotted up at two. Jesus Porjas, and as soon as Tim makes this nine, they'll be knotted up at two. All right, two, two. Tim Barron. Thank you. 
Jesus with a break, ball down, long shot on the one. Certainly going to make it a little tougher. Two and the eight in the middle of the table. Close to the side pocket, froze together. Ooh, did it get a good angle to make it? That might be a great shot right there. Four ball on the bottom rail. Gonna go with a touch high inside. One rail straight down. Watch the scratch. Mm. That's the only problem about that shot. I'd rather spin three rails and protect myself from that scratch. It's the only thing about that shot. That one rail, or you have to put a little extra inside. Try to catch the long rail coming down to protect yourself. And that's still no guarantee. The three rail is drawn out. It's a little bit safer. Might not get down quite as far, but protects you from that scratch. Brian Cantrell just went on the hill 3-2 over Nate Beal. He uh, racks and breaks. back. He can still stay below the side, but Let's see what he's going to do here. Can't quite tell. Yeah, that's what he's looking at, drawing it back over there. Probably the safest bet. Still going to have a nice shot on the seven, so. Just like that. Nice shot. All right, nice out there by Tim. Unfortunate scratch there by uh, Jesus. Tim on the hill, 3 2. Safety on Nate. Got some traffic in the way. This is a big game, you know, obviously, for both him and Jesus. Because if uh, Jesus happens to win, he's breaking on the hill. Uh, 
the level of play between these two, it's, uh, you know, you know, crush it, break and run out. So Tim has to be real, take his time to be real deliberate with this, uh, this rack here. Certainly being deliberate with the rack. He wants to make sure he gets a good break. Nate Beal with the jump shot, making the one. Strong. Don't forget, use any solution. If you're in the Bradenton, Sarasota area and you need any stuff done around the house, work, yard, land clearing, go advantage for your office needs. Give them a call, check them out. Looking for quality uh, people. Dry break by Tim. Of course, classic outfitters. Classic billiard outfitters. You want to dress to impress. You want to look good when you're at the tournaments. You want to look good when you're at Last Call Tavern. So why not uh, do the best of both worlds? Go get some jam up clothes. Look, uh, look sharp from classic billiards outfitters. And uh, head on down to the tavern. Looking good. Nice safety here. Very nice safety by Jesus. He does have a real nice one real kick to make. He can actually pocket the eight ball here if he makes a good hit. Maybe uh, he might be frozen to the eight, I mean to the seven, where he can't get away from it to get to the bottom rail. And if that's the case, then Jesus hit a great, great shot. That's exactly what happened. Tim's looking to have to come two rails out of the corner, not hit the five, make a clean hit on the one, try to pocket the eight, At least make a clean hit on the one. Came up a little short there. Maybe the 1-8 isn't wired. Maybe the 8's off the rail where it's not very uh, feasible to go shoot the combo. Stick him here with a safety. Tim will definitely, I feel very confident that he's going to make a good hit here. He might call the nine either in the side or cross bank. He called it for the cross bank. Hoping that he makes a good contact. Looks like Brian, I mean, uh, David Cantrell is going to advance 4 2 over Nate Beal. And he does. That was a good match, though, between these two guys. So if anybody's wondering why Tim is back, still at the table, he made the nine, but he didn't call it in the correct pocket. So it spots back up.
All right, guys, we got our feature match back up. We got Wesley White and uh, Robert Breslin. Robert Breslin from the uh, Jupiter, Florida area in the orange shirt. Wesley White is breaking from just outside the Atlanta, Georgia area. Wesley White, our 2022 8-ball A-Division men's champion. Defeated Dave Stem last night in a double hill. He had to win two sets. True double elimination. And he played awesome. Lights out. Shot that Robert was open to leave Wesley. online just in case just to be safe but he didn't give himself a shot on the two he didn't come out high enough great hit and what is unfortunately he left Robert straight in on the two pretty much He's to pockets too. He might have to go away from the three, so it might not be quite as bad as I thought. He does obviously have a great shot to make the two. I don't think he can just stop it to hold for the three. Maybe try to draw into the four.
have uh, made the three on kind of unintentionally in the wrong pocket. But actually can get fortunate enough to uh, get the four. Oh no. He's either going to scratch or hook himself. Either way, no love there. We got a double hill match. Tim Barron, J Jesus Boras. Jesus uh, breaking. So we'll be working on a run here. The four, five, nine is a. Uh, Kind of a problem ball for Hages. So if you go down to table 61, well, definitely has a shot on the four, but he tied up the five, even worse with the nine. I do believe that if he pays his pockets the four, he can open up the five, nine. Meanwhile, Robert here with the jump shot. Chin did. With a shot, I'll tell you what, I've played Robert and seen him shooters in Port St. Lucie a couple of times, but he's impressed me this week here. Uh, he's come up with some big games and some big shots here. Very nicely done there. Scratch, but that was a hell of a shot. I tell you, he's come up with some big shots, and he's gonna have to come up with another big shot. The best you can do is just you, you got to be able to juice it back and draw it at least back beyond the side pockets to give yourself a halfway decent shot on the eight. Not easy here. Well, he definitely turned the furniture around on that one. And, uh, no, well, you know what? He got away with it. He didn't give up anything easy for Wesley to work with here. Yeah, Wesley playing like a nice little two way there. If he double over it, banks the seven and goes in, he's straight. If he doesn't, he's, uh, Left row in a real tough spot here where he has to kick. <coughs> nice hit. Good hit. I think Wesley has to play the seven in the side. I don't think it goes by the nine in the upper corner. We're safe. He just rolls to the uh, seven past the nine and freeze to the back of it. Good hit by uh, Tim Barron. Left hand is a very tough shot on the five ball. But if he makes it, just can kind of let their cue ball run. He'll come around the table and have a shot on the seven. What a nice shot. 
Did he hook himself? Oh, it's close. He did. I'm watching Jesus Porras on table 61 with Tim Barron. Hill Hill. Came with a tough shot. Now he's jacked up. Not jacked up, but uh, behind the nine ball, he's got to come with a jump shot. Breslin with a monster break. Oh, you gotta love this. Four balls down. Four balls down, shoot the two stop, shoot the four. Just draw back for the six in the same pocket. Run out, automatic here. Just stay focused. Hit the ball. Don't try to baby it. Jesus got away. He made a great contact shot and hooked him behind the line. Uh oh. Not sure if that 4 9 is uh, good to the 9 for the pocket. I'm sure he's going to call it, but. It's a matter of whether it's uh, wired or not. And he has to be careful not to come off the four and scratch. Oh, yeah. Great shot. Great, great shot there by uh, Rob Breslin. Tied up at one piece. Oh, Tim Barham. With an awesome kick. He almost kicks it right in the side. Well, he's left uh, Jesus Borjas with a tough shot on the seven, but if he makes it, should be good to uh, get out and win the match. I tell you, it's been a battle. They're double hill three three, and it has been a hard fought, good match. Oh, Jesus! He overcut it. It was a th thin cut. Caught the point, seven hanging in the pocket. Golden opportunity for Tim to steal the set right here. himself on the only ball on the table, the nine ball behind. Not give himself a self a shot on the eight. But he got away with it. Wow, what a match. Holy crap. Not taking away anything from Wesley Robert match, but when it's double hill, you gotta just Stop and kind of sweat that match. Great match between Tim Barron and Jesus Borjas. Tim comes away with it. Oh, what a what a battle there, man!
<laughs> what do you mean, Stu? Tim is so lucky. That guy's non-stop, world-class talent. I'll tell you, Wesley, he just, he is, I heard he's been playing good, but he's making it look like kids play right now. He's just making everything look easy, easy. <clears throat> uh, for anybody at home, if you're from South Florida, Terrell Morgan, Jim Ripley, table 60. We're going to check it out, watch that match. This is a 5-4 race. Wesley is a master. He has to go to 5. Rob goes to 4. Yeah. Tell you what, he's crushing the brake. Holy sh... <laughs> three of these guys. It's so weird. Some guys are crushing the brake, 2 and 3, and some guys can't get anything to fall. Nice break there by Rob. Oh, no. I like the thought of coming back and forth. Fortunately, he had just a touch of inside. So I brought it into the nine and hooked him behind the eight ball. He has to. Oh, man, Rob got him a break for sure. He had a great jump shot earlier, so what? Why not do it again, he says. I'm here for the duration. Might as well make a count. Just got to launch it off the table. Just getting ready to say. Definitely knows how to keep it exciting, make it entertaining for us. Meanwhile, it's just looking like he's every day at the office here. Just run out, run out, run out like water. It's almost disgusting you know, how smooth and easy he makes it look. He should try speed pull sometime. I don't know, I just have a feeling he'd probably be good at it. Great shot on the one here.
That's incredible. A nice shot on that one ball. shot by Wesley. Good safety. Uh, Chris Daly yeah, played uh, horribly. Donkeyed it off as I do. Uh, Bobby Hooker, you know what? I, I might have to ask him what kind of break that, can, break that is. He's definitely generating a lot of energy and making balls. Maybe it could be a quality racking technique also. Who knows? Looking at coming two rails into the three. And he's, he's right on, he's about on the line. If he aims for the left side of the ball, the blue diamond tag, which is what he's aiming at, bang. Oh, he hit below the side pocket again. Had he hit just above the side pocket, I think he would have been right on target. Well, Keith, we tried to give you the best angle possible. Is your broken up? Did you win? I broke first, right? <laughs> yeah. I guess it's uh, could be worse. We could just give you one camera angle, and that'd be it. So we're working on it, Keith.
<laughs> three down. He has consistently had three on the break. And whatever it is, he's got a white diamond tip on it, I'm pretty sure. My man, Chris Filippelli, checking in with us. Again, big, big shout out to Chris for coming up yesterday and helping out in the chat. Does a lot of work for us. So, thank you so much for all you do, Flip. You're an amazing guy. And love having you on board with us here at XPC. Oh, there's the problem. Keith is from Jersey. Oh, my goodness. Probably hangs out at San Castro. They sent Troy O'Brien down here. They had to get rid of him. Maybe goes to Clifton Billiards over there in Vinny's room up in Clifton, Jersey. I know I know Paul the Plumber wouldn't want him hang out there at that, uh, I forgot Paul the Plumber's name. Room. Uh, Rockaway. Rockaway Billiards. Did he get the speed? He's good for the four. He can come across two rails. <laughs> this is, sounds like he's shooting a 30 30 rifle. Flip, uh, and guess what? If I had to guess, you're pregnant. I don't know. On fire, man. 5-1. I'll tell you what, man. He just, he's making it look uh, super, super freaking easy. Give me a second. I'm going to go check on Robert. I'm going to find out what kind of break key that is. I'll let you know. Hold on.
All right, guys. I know everybody was we were talking about uh, Robert's break. <laughs> it's like a generic jump break. He paid like less than $100 for it 10 years ago. Put a white diamond on it. There you go. He just happens to crush the break. So we're going to see Flip again since they're going to come back since he forgot to bring uh, White Castle home for dinner. So they're going to make a drive up here. Hey, Sandy Wetzel. What, Sandy Wendell? Oh. Trail Morgan with a, just on a tear over here, representing South Florida, Miami, in the uh, men's B division nine ball. Just put a tear on Jim Ripley with a 4-0. Congratulations to him. He is super, super motivated to uh, do well here, and he's been playing really well. So we're going to keep an eye on him, too. All right, so uh, with that being said, we'll take a few minutes while we get uh, our next matches in here. Good time to uh, get a drink, use the restroom, feed the dog, put the kids in the closet, whatever you got to do. Al Wendell, checking us out. What's up, Al? You and Sandy need to get up here next year. Come out and hang out. All right, guys, so give me a few minutes. I'll be back with you. This is Gary G. We're live from Kissimmee, Florida for the 2022 West Coast Challenge. And this is Extreme Bull Challenge. Back with you in a few. Thank you. 
to another table, then.
All right, guys, this is, uh, this is great news. This is our hot seat match for the men's division, A bracket. Hot seat match. Dave Contrell from uh, outside Atlanta, Georgia. Tim Barron, Sarasota area. Great match up here. This is going to be a fun one to watch. So now's the time to... Uh, Tell everybody to get the hell out of the house, keep quiet so you can sit back and enjoy. All right, guys, uh, looks like Tim Barron wins the flip. Gonna get started here. We have uh, another match going on in the B division. Jeremy Colnan, Mike Bottoms look like they're knotted up at one piece. That's on table 61 if you wanna watch. Over on table 59, Christian Vanegas and Jose Del Rio. Should be a real nice matchup. Uh, Jose Del Rio, the owner of Strokers in Palm Harbor, Florida. Awesome owner, great room, amazing food. Got to have the Freddy shrimp. That's what they're known for. Just phenomenal, fresh shrimp. They they, uh, they batter it lightly with this amazing sauce on it, and it's just mm, to die for. So if you're uh, if you're on Facebook and you want to watch some of these other matches, jump over, get on YouTube, type in Extreme Pool Challenge should either say live or day three it'll open up 
And then you can pick uh, any table to number 58 through 62. So check it out. All right, here we go, Tim. Let's the break. One ball down. Uh, Nikita, next year it is in a different venue. So I'm not really sure exactly the setup yet. We haven't been there to look at it. So it's definitely going to be a whole different uh, atmosphere than what we have here. We're hoping that we can make it work. Especially with the noise factor. So, yeah, next year is going to be interesting. So let's see what happens. All right. Uh, to me, they're going to bank or play a good safety here. Four ball down by the nine. So if he banks, he has to be careful. He's probably going to run into the eight, possibly get stuck. So it's actually a good opportunity for a nice safety here. Alternate break, it's tough here. Uh, Chris Dale, yeah, there was a little action. Kim Dyer and uh, Justin played last night. Kim snuck out the set against him. I'm sure there's a few other people uh, up here looking for action. Jeff Hooks from Atlanta is here. He's always looking for action. So yeah, if, you, uh, if you're in town, stop on by. tap on the nine. I don't know if Tim, he may have enough to see the edge of the board four to cut it in. And he did. Say you gotta hit the shot with a little bit of pace to get that four rail position. Probably thin the five, send the cue ball down here to the bottom to stay and keep the five behind the six. Okay, that's a nice good safety here. Especially if he gets froze to the six. <clears throat> if he's froze to the six, he has to shoot straight and to spin. If there's a gap there, the kick isn't as hard. Oh man, he hit that freaking good too. And he got away with a nice leave then. He's a little disappointed in that one. Though.
he would have walked in and made that five ball on the kick. Just got the point. Close if he can actually see enough of it to make it. Or if just see enough of it to hit it. If he can just hit it, then he's probably going to kick it and stick it. But if he can make it, he's going to hit him with some top follow. Oh, that was a great shot. i tell you what, this guy boy is good. He's, he's been just. Wheeling his way through the tournament, nothing, uh, nothing flashy, but getting the job done. Watch the scratch. Watch this. He knew it as soon as he hit it. It's a big, big game for, uh, or not that Tim has won it yet, but he's supposed to win the game here. David is not a happy camper. Sneaks it out. And why, uh, David Dragon, let's update you. Mike Bottoms leads Jeremy Coleman 2 to 1. Uh, Christian Vanegas and Jose Del Rio, I don't think they're, it's either the first game or they're done using the, uh, Score tablet. Keep us up to speed with what their game is. All right, we get to watch Dave uh, break here. But no, uh, but nothing fell. Shoot and stop for Tim on the two. Just roll forward for the three, four on the side. Trick is from the five to the six to get good on the uh, six. You don't want to have to send that cue ball moving. You want to try to get, which is going to be tough to get to where you can just shoot the six and stop. So.
So now Tim is really trying to figure out where do I need to get to the five to really do my best to get to the six. Tricky position here. That actually might be pretty damn good. If he can get to the side rail just before the side pocket with some spin, not a lot of speed, and almost aim to hit for the, you know, your nine is like your target. You know, you'll have to run into it. See the six. I made the seven ball problem. He came down just as I anticipated, you know, just as I saw the shot, just came down a little bit deeper than he wanted to. Really hard to gauge that speed and spin. this because this is a big game. If Tim can win David's break really makes it tough for Dave. Alternate break, race to four. But if Tim can hold serve here and, and steal this game back, that's a big swing back in his favor. shot when it came off his stick, but uh, he didn't leave anything easy for David. David's got his hands full here. This is uh, jacked up over the nine. Eight ball. Yeah, there you go. I mean, you can see this is not, <laughs> not the other. He's calling the nine, so I think he's going to go ahead and bank the six back towards it. Wow, are you freaking kidding me? How good did he hit that shot? All right, folks, you just saw something that was pretty sick. That was freaking... Not only did he fire the six in with a spin and touch it inside, but he called it knowing the cue ball's coming right back in tr into uh, the direction. That's impressive. Oh, crap. Table 61, Mike Bottoms on the hill, 3-2 over Jeremy Coleman. Sandy, that was a tr that was a tremendous shot. He hit it with such a good stroke. And just knowing the direction of the shot. That's that's impressive. I mean just yeah. Impressive. All right, back to Tim with the break. Four, 
Four ball, four ball, four ball. Four ball down. Not the best shot on the one, but you almost have to go for it because if you can get anywhere on close to the two, two nine is all definitely an option there. Keith Campbell, that's a national highlight right there. Yeah, that should be on ESPN highlights right there. Tim went with one three combo. It was a tough shot, really. I didn't feel like I probably wouldn't have gone for that one just because the angle is so tough and the speed you need to hit it. And but I'm here and he's playing for the hot seat, so hard to fault him for what he's going to do. i tell you what, it's going to be hard pressed to uh, take David down. He is playing pretty damn strong right now. Ooh. I didn't expect that. Ooh. That is huge for Tim. The fact that he didn't make the combination was one thing, but to send the two ball around the table and hang in the side pocket like that. Tim's got to capitalize on this. Nice shot. That was nice finesse there. He didn't hit it hard, but with a nice spin on it. As soon as it hit that end rail, came right back out, crossed over the table, and it was a nice shot on the three. I know uh, <coughs> Lefty 941, he's, they're rooting on Tim. I know David would love, love, love to win this match and get to the hot seat and hope his uh, teammate and fellow partner, Wesley White, who just won the eight ball, would find his way through the tournament to the two and could play out for the championship here. We'll have to see how it plays out. We just watched Wesley uh, play. It's hard to believe that he's on the one loss side because he just makes it look easy. Yeah, I got something for your girl, Jeremy. to your work. It's a good shot. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. I already uh owed a punch on the last shot. Starting to run out of uh-ohs. Flirting with the side pocket there, but he made a good shot. Good speed. All right. Tim Barron. Fights his way back through that rack to take a 2-1 lead. Mike Bottoms, uh, Jeremy Coleman on the second table. Uh, still duking it out, 3-2, Mike leads Jeremy. 
he has a place. Uh, Bobby chooses to stand. There are a lot of people, they don't want to sit down when they play. There's chairs available for the players. And it's a kind of a community chair there that uh, Tim's sitting in now. A lot of the other players, they would just take turns. All right, we need to break. Oh, that's cue ball jumped up and just mm, scratched his major problem. Not a major problem, but it is a big problem for Tim because of the two ball. If it passes the eight, it's okay. If not, he's got to do some work. Beetle Bailey, yes, race to four. Neither one are masters. I think Tim used to be a master, and basically what happens is, is if you make it to a master standard and then you don't do good for a couple of years, they take you back off. Because there's a lot of players, um, you know, that could do do great in the tournament. And to be honest, you know, they get a little lucky. They're not really like a top tier player. So they, they do move up to the master status for a while, but they come back down. So I believe Tim might have been at the master status for a while. Didn't do well in the tournaments, and now he's, he's back down to the, uh, the mortal, mortal side of uh, the event. Well, he missed it, but he got away with not selling out. I'm leaving the two hanging for David. I don't know if, how much of the two he can see. He might have gotten away with it. If he did, it's not by much. He. If he has to jump, it's just a fraction of the nine ball. Okay. Obviously, he's queuing and dressing it like he has a straight inch shot. Uh oh. A little distracting when the phones start ringing. that's really on the shooter and the mental state of saying, you know what, stop and regroup. Same when something somebody's walking by. It happens to all of us. Can't blame anybody else. Just gotta stop and take a break, refocus, regroup. Nice shot there by David. Should be able to just roll up on the three and He'll have a little bit of a back cut on the five, but he can hit it with a nice smooth draw stroke. Drag it over to the side rail where the cue ball is now, and then back out for the six. Or he can follow it and come around and get better position on the five. Yeah, that's a nice shot. Shoot the five inside around, come back out to the middle. Looking real good here to get out and stay on serve. It's like a tennis match, you know, alternate serves, alternate breaks. So, no reason for him to miss his old. I'll say it's a. This is a little bit tricky just because of the eight, but I, I really don't see him having any problems here. Very nice. Okay, he's a smooth operator for sure. Very smooth operator.
All right. We're holding serve. 2-2, two, two, race to four. Kind of as we predicted, it's going to be a real good matchup. Winner, this is uh, King of the Hill. Guaranteed uh, at least second place. The loser is at least guaranteed third. Thomas Decker. Well, do they do what in Florida? Do they do what? And where are you from, Thomas? Uh, fill me in a little bit here. Two ball down. Shot on the ones, not the best. The one is up on the rail head string. About a diamond off the out of the pocket. Oh, I don't know if he can get by the five. I think he can. If not, it'll be close. Now I guess the five is blocking it. He can push if he wants. just for the kick and that may hurt him he just left David a nice open shot on the one everything's open nothing's tied up People's tournament three years in a row. And this is an amateur event. If you're qualified to play in any league event, if any any leagues, uh, APA, USAPL, BCA, Valley, ACS, then you're qualified to play in this event. This is not the People's Choice Tournament. That's Dominic and Jen. I'm, I'm still a little confused. I don't know anybody that's won this tournament three years in a row. I don't know too many people that have won it two years in a row. Except for this year in the ladies' singles, April. So... We'll have to have that discussion with you sometime. Kind of understand what what I'm missing here but I know it's tough right now now's not the time for it all right so Dave came up a little short on position that he had hoped for on the three uh oh not what he wanted to do well for him the good thing is that the three six is tied up Tim has absolutely nothing great to shoot at here as far as could shoot the 3 6 combo. Definitely don't have to like it. No, he made the 6 with the 3 kind of come back and punch the cue ball and send it across the table. So, David Scratch, we had to feel fortunate that he didn't leave the table wide open. Now Tim's struggling.
tricky spot here. Definitely doesn't want to lose control of the table here. If you can find a good safety, that would be good. All right, Tom, you're from Florida. Um, still not sure how the People's Tournament has an effect on this tournament, but... Oh, maybe you're talking about Anthony winning the People's Tournament back to back to back to back to back to back. To back. Uh, that's... I don't know, that has nothing to do with this. Oh, if he scratched. No, no, he. Did not make it easy for Dave because the 5 4. 4 does pass. I think. If it passes the nine, he can shoot in the upper right corner. But you got to get a real good position on it. I'll tell you what, Tom. You come on down, buy me some dinner, we'll hang out, we'll talk about it all night long. Good steak. I think it would do both of us good. Let's come hang out. Maybe a little surf and turf. I like surf and turf. <laughs> William Massey checking in, my man. Hope you're doing well, buddy. Haven't got to see you much lately. his best to capitalize on this opportunity. Come underneath it, that's a nice option to shoot it up in the uh, upper right corner. <laughs> Brian Lou, of course, Kevin Delgado. I don't know, you have to look him up on CompuSports. Follow his bracket, see where he's at. I do not know. I've seen him roaming around. He was still in the tournament earlier. Not sure how he's doing. Okay, Tom, uh, again, I didn't understand your question in the beginning, so that's why I was asking. Again, feel free to come on down by dinner. We'll talk about it until the cows come home, and then we can have them for dinner. LT says it sucks to get old. That, my friend, is a fact. Craig Anderson. I don't think uh, Kevin Delgado was playing for the King of the Hill. In the B division. David has Tim in a bad spot here. He can three row kick it. He might even be able to come off the bottom rail between the seven and uh, kick it that way. Oh, okay, Craig. All right, they just called him out for that. Sorry. I was going to say, I'm looking at him. I didn't see him floating around, so thank you for letting me know. Yeah, it's kind of a we don't know who's coming until uh, they walk in the room. And half the time they forget to, they don't bring me the sheets.
Wow, what a shot by Tim. What a freaking ch chin dip, baby. in that awesome jump shot. <sighs> Give uh, David an opportunity to really steal this. Thin cut. Bring the cue ball right back to him where it is. I don't like shooting it with outside. I like shooting it with inside so that I can stay to the left. That's why I don't like outside. Now you shoot. Come around two to three rounds. Half ball hit on the five with some nice outside spin. You got to hit it hard. My goodness. He hits the nine okay. Alright, boy, you got fortunate there. Oh. He hit long rail first, so that's why. I'm still not sure why he hit it as hard, but it worked out for him. But he has to make a tough shot on this. Not a tough shot, but position is going to be tricky. I like running it up and down the table. Plot thickens, folks. Let's see if we can get that other camera angle real quick for you. Hopefully. Or not. Oh, man. You can't hit that soft when you're thinning it that much. You gotta, you gotta put pace on it because the cut's gonna throw. A lot of potty English on that shot by David. That was a, this is a big game because David gets to break the next one. Oh, he broke serve. 3-2 David. David on the hill. It's been a tricky match, man. It's been a give and take. I will say that much for sure. Definitely a give and take. Yeah, the seven ball, I'm surprised he even hit the eight. He hit that seven with a lot of, you know, with some high inside, and you're going to come around three rounds. Just make sure you get deep enough past the line. But nonetheless, here we are. Cost, cost him, so now uh, David with the break. Two games to win the match here. Nice break. Two on the break. Good sight on the one. Not a great shot. So I'm probably going to see a safety here. He gets in the left side of the one. Bank it to the center of the table, just above the three nine, bring the cue ball down underneath the nine. I mean, bring the one back to where it is behind the three seven. Sending the cue ball down below the nine. Or bank the one down table and try to get the cue ball behind the three. That wasn't a bad shot either. Looks like Tim can see the one at least part of it. 
you don't have to be able to just stick the cue ball right there and send the one a couple rails down just like that that's a money shot right there beautifully done the only problem is even if Tim does get ball in hand he doesn't have a clean shot at the one to do anything with it David did a one rail kick no what a nice hit what a nice all right, well, Tim's going to lock him up. Should put the cue ball behind the six. So the one ball down table. Oh, he went for the shot, made it. Is he going to get a shot on the two? That was a nice shot on the one. I didn't think he had that much uh, room to shoot that ball. I'm not sure what the question was there. I didn't. Um, I didn't hear it. Beautiful shot. Beautiful shot. <sighs> Gotta get by the seven. Gotta get by the seven. Being jacked up with the four kind of hinders your stroke on the follow through a little bit because you're jacked up just that little bit where you don't have the level cue to get that follow like you need. That's a heartbreaker there. So now he's got to come with a really, he's got to come with like the shot of his life. He's calling the nine just in case, and that's smart. You don't know what's going to happen. Safe than sorry, call the nine just for giggles. But the key is he has to get over the seven to make a clean hit. Definitely not easy. I'd almost maybe shoot the seven to freeze it on the four. Tie it up at least. Yeah, that's going to cost you a match. Had you just rolled the seven up and tied on the four. You know, gets him through the inning. You know, if David doesn't have anything to shoot at, you're back to kicking and set, you know, playing some safeties. But unfortunately for Tim, just came up. He made a great shot on three. Just came up short on the position of the four, getting behind the seven. That's a little tough one there. David didn't want to come back that fork because he's got to stretch out a little bit, even though it's a seven at the table. You don't want to have to stretch over this nine ball reaching for this. Mm, yeah, that really isn't an issue, but it is when you're on the hill playing for the hot seat. Uh-oh. Came up short. I think he went to hit the rail. Maybe bounce out a little bit. Taking himself a little bit of a trench here. Making it hard. Oh my goodness. And hooks him. Bring the jump cue. I think you're going to need it. I don't know what the hell I was thinking there. He just got into the six ball and put too much draw on it. I think he was hoping to catch part of the, uh, the side rail and have it bounce out just a little bit. Nice 
nice hit. Unfortunately, he's not going to get uh, the desire to leave that he wanted. That's going to hurt. And he had to feel good that he at least got back to the table. And had a, made a good jump, made good contact, just couldn't pocket the ball. Excuse me. No. <laughs> Again, Dave making it interesting, but he, I feel confident that he's very capable to make this shot here. Good shot. Dave Contrell wins, wins King of the Hill 4-2 over Tim Barron. Good match. You know, they both uh, they both made some amazing shots. Both made a couple boo-boos. You expect that here. What a good match, though. It was a fun match to watch. Um, congratulations to Dave Contrell for winning the hot seat. He gets a quite a nice little break coming up for a couple of hours. Tim, uh, he's got a little weight, too. Got some more guys coming through the loser's bracket to uh, catch up to these two. So hang tight. Good time to uh, refresh the cocktails, you know, get some snacks, and uh, you know, maybe throw the clothes out of the wash in the dryer. And we'll be back at it. Good match, huh, Sandy Wendell? Thank you for hanging in there with us all day. Again, this is Gary G. This is Extreme Pool Challenge live from Kissimmee, Florida for the 2022 West Coast Challenge. Hang tight, we'll be back in a few.
play in here or no? Huh? Did Hal just play in here? Yeah. He did? You know, he won a lot? I don't know.
Tails. All right, guys, we've got a great matchup. We have another hot seat match. Terrell Morgan out of Miami, Florida. Kevin Delgado out of Orlando. Men's B division. Race to four. Terrell Morgan with the break. Man, does he crush him. Two balls down, good shot on the one. This ought to be a fast paced match. These guys are two good ball strikers. Young, aggressive, quick tempo. Mm, mm -mm. Safety, he says. <clears throat> Over on table 59, we have Ty Benfield and Brian Jacobs. Both of them knocked me out, put me on the, Ty knocked me in the loser bracket, Brian knocked me out of the tournament. So I hope they both lose and their sticks catch on fire. But they're both really nice guys. Good shot there by uh, Kevin. Perfect on the two. Oh yeah, he should have no problems getting out here. Looks like he has an angle just to roll forward to the bottom rail and back out. Nicely done. Oh yeah, these guys are dialed in, man. They are, they're in the zone. They're both playing really well. Very nice. <coughs> Brian Luke, here's your boy. Uh oh. Kevin uh, was trying to drag the cue ball around the eight. Got into it, so now he's going to have to come with a, either a bank or a safety. Let's see. He's going to go offensive. We're going to be. He went offensive. Uh oh. And scratched. That's going to cost him game number one. You can see that he's uh, not a happy camper. Here 
All right, game number one goes to Terrell Morgan. Yeah. Terrell had broke, made a couple balls on the, on the break, hung the one ball, giving uh, Kevin an opportunity at the table. Kevin running out like water and just, when he hit the seven, ran into the eight, got funny position on the eight. Went aggressive, went for the bank shot, and uh, unfortunately scratch given Terrell ball in hand with eight and nine, just tuck tuck, all done. Thompson uh, cheering for his boy Kevin. Brian Luke uh, hitting me up with the commentary curse. It's true, man. It's a real deal, man. I don't know what to tell you. It's not intentional. to each other, so yeah, obviously this doesn't have a great shot to get position on the two. So not sure what he wants to do here. He has not a couple options for safeties. Kevin Delgado at the table. That's going to be a nice safety. That's beautifully done. I think he's kind of froze in the back of the three pretty much. Just a little gap there, but I don't think he can see. I don't think he can see the one. He can't go to the bottom row and spin off because he can't get between the four and the two. Almost have to go maybe three rails shooting. Okay, he's going to go one rail. Nice. Okay. It's an option. Nice hit. Very nice hit. And he got a little love. He didn't leave it hanging. Not sure if Brian can swerve around the five a little bit and make it or not. So we'll have to see how he's going to attack it. If you can see it at least full enough to bank it back up, you know, up table, you can draw the cue ball back behind the five. All right, that's the angle I was looking for, so you can't see it to hit it full. He's looking if you, I don't know if you know, we'll have to wait till he moves for us. I like this angle though. Good shot. Very nicely done. Terrell can see it. Actually, maybe even cut it into the side. Chances are he's going to run into the six. So yeah, getting back down for the twos can, could be potentially a little tricky here. Oh, he hit that good. Just got away from that six ball just enough. That's, actually, that's, that's textbook, man. You can't do any better than that right there. That was a beautiful shot. Very nicely done there. Being a potential rivalry uh, for 
for for time to come. Two very sharp shooting young guys battling it out. I can see these guys going head to head in a lot of events in the future. You know, not most ideal shot. He could have drew that pack a little bit better. Put it into the bottom left, you're going to come around, you might run into the five, so you got to be careful. Gotta get away with it. <coughs> he made a great shot, and you knew he was going to run into the five. When I say he got away with it, he got away with coming up with a really nice shot on the five. Doesn't always have to work out that way. Nice touch. I'll tell you, this guy plays nice. You can see why he's playing for the hot seat. Yeah. I talked to him for a minute earlier. He was very, very motivated, very confident. You could just see, like he was like, he came. He's on a mission. He came up here with a mission, and he's working on executing that mission. This shot was straight top. I love it. You know, even though it's a high pressure moment, they're cutting up and they're having fun. That says a lot about their characters as, as players and people. That was a great shot. And I was just saying, he had a couple options there straight top, some top with some spin. Came down really nicely in the seven. Very good. Terrell Morgan going to make this nine to go up two nothing. Very nice. He's on a mission, folks. on the break, nothing fell. Not sure if one is boy, it's tough if you can thin it into the side. It's one of those kinda of scary. It's like you yeah, it's so thin. He gets past the three ball. It's a nice, uh, nice stable to get out on here. shot and get in position on the four and the four is up on the head string right about where his right knee is so that's the key this shot to the four ball
think he's afraid of just maybe clipping the eight. He's gonna play safe of some sort, I think. That's a great shot if you Well, that's a great shot. Very nice. That's a heads up move right there. Very heads up there by Kevin. Don't take the bad chance. Bide your time. Unfortunately, sometimes this will go against you. But nonetheless, it was a smart heads up shot. So now Kevin, if he can pocket to three and bring the cue ball back to the same side it's on now for the four. Oh, what a nice shot that was. Brian Luke has no chance ever. Good shot. Real nice shot. I like shooting the same shot, coming three rails. So I don't want to dig into it too much because on that third rail you don't want to get behind the nine or clip the nine. It's a little softer spin. Skid and he still made it. Kevin Delgado, that was a, he played that wreck very nice. Very headsy up. Instead of not being comfortable shooting the three, played it safe. Got back to the table. Very heads up and uh, nicely done. Can't say enough about it. Table 60, Dawn Logan, Kim Malone, if you're interested in that one. Again, if you're on Facebook, jump over to YouTube and uh, type in Extreme Pool Challenge. You're going to be able to find find us uh, multiple tables. You can watch multiple matches at once. Or Dead correct about that. You got no shot. Kevin is playing very strong. Very heads up, smart. Got a nice table here, the 7-8. I mean, it's, it's, it's not really a trouble. You gotta play smart. Did he get the speed? No, he didn't. A little bit frustrated that he came up short on position here. Looks like he's trying to get down table maybe. It's a two-way shot. You know, you bank the four to the bottom right. Bring the cue ball down a little bit. 
use that 7 8 as a potential blocker. No, nothing's been. Um, he's okay though because the 9 11 5 is blocking the 4. An off ankle combo. And, you know, it's not what Kevin was hoping for, but it didn't turn out bad. So he's. He's okay. He shouldn't be upset about that. Oh, oh, oh my god. Great jump shot. Hits the four. Caroms the five. Five hangs in the pocket. Doesn't leave Ke <laughs> I love it. They're laughing. They're joking. They're playing for the hot seat, guys. Young guys, a lot of times you see them, they're all amped up and uh, but no, they're having fun. Good sportsmanship. I wouldn't be surprised if win or lose enough to the match if they're out having a nice cocktail together one minute's all set and done. Kevin in a little bit of a bad spot here just because, you know, it's just not an easy he can hit the four, try to bring a straight back up table, send the cue ball forward. Over towards the six ball. Try to get behind the six or maybe behind the nine. Or you can go all, all offensive and bank the four back into the five. Oh, it clean. I did not know it went between there, and, and he hit that ball pretty damn good. Very unfortunate that it, uh, well, that it didn't fall. Hell, Reeves. Hell yeah, my boy. Kevin Delgado going at it. Solid, confident, and playing so strong. Oh. Big, big opportunity. This is what Kevin needs to get to, to back on serve. Alternate break. You don't want to lose on your break. And, and this, uh, Kevin broke this game, so really, really, he wants to win this game so he can hold serve and be 2 2. Beautiful shot. Beautiful shot. I like it. Took his time, walked around. This is where do I need to be? You can really just roll this, roll the 8 in. You don't have to do anything special. Nice little tap. Yep, didn't work. that's even better. All right, we are on serve two two. That was a big win for uh, Kevin. If Terrell made it that seven. He wins the game. He's on the hill 3-1 versus 2-2. Two -two. So, exactly what we expected. A real close, well-played match between these two players. 
telling you, I'm enjoying watching these two guys. It's fun watching these young guys come up. They put in a lot of work, put in a lot of time. And now is where the where it shines. You know, this is where they shine, it pays off. Here we got a trail with the break. I mean these balls are gonna they're gonna crack in half as hard as he's hitting. Yeah, look at this. Two down. He has a shot on the one. You're gonna drag the cue ball down with some low. Good position on the two. Real nice position to, to be able to run this rack out. Very cool. Says the guy is their mentor. Nice guy, nice young guy. And and Terrell Morgan as well. I mean, these these are two class act guys right here. I'm really uh, enjoying watching them play and being able to call the match. Mm -mm. Oh, he got away with it off the eight. I would have tried to like uh, draw it down with a little drag stroke. Uh, he got very fortunate that he, he ran into the eight on the right side of it. Well, that was a little headsy uh, play there. I think he was straight on the two, so he actually manufactured the angle to bring the cue ball up. Playing the two off the nine. Nice shot there. The main thing was that he didn't, he didn't get himself behind the uh, seven or eight. Side of that pocket. Trying to hold the cue ball nicely for the uh, seven. Does he go for the corner or the side? I think I'm going for the side personally. Very nice. And he did baby it, which that's what I like. He hit it. He, he's put a nice stroke on it. He's looking at this shot. You can either hit it with a little draw stroke and just slide the cue ball over. You can hit it with a little bit of follow. Come to the head rail and back out. Nice shot. That shot you're hitting it with a little bit more authority versus the high follow. So very nice. Very nicely done. I like the fist pump. Shows a lot of respect for each other. All right, Kevin's turn to uh, try to reciprocate here with a break and run. Put the heat on the trail. If he can win this game, he'll hill.
quite sure what uh, Terrell wants to do if he wants to go offensive and or defensive here and try to play it safe and just uh, smart shot smart shot I thought that was the right decision but you know sometimes the adrenaline gets you pumped up you get a little amped up You're like oh man I gotta go I wanna run out I wanna run out he has played some heads up safeties instead of trying to do something silly and play the wrong shot that's really like shows that they're really doing their homework as far as making the right decisions. All right, Kevin, going to go airborne here. Forget about it. Are you kidding me? That might be one of the best shots we've seen. That is sick. Sick. I love it. I love it. He's eating it up. He hit that. Forget about it. Are you kidding me? And then we get the auto zoom and dial itself back in and clear up in that picture. Ooh. Change to the side view real quick. There we go. Give that camera a minute to get that blur out. He still has a lot. He, I'll tell you, sick on the one, but he still has a lot of work with that four, five, six clutter. That was a. World class jump shot. One ball frozen to the rail. Sick. And he nutted it. He ginned it like it was a hanger. Let's see if we can get that other angle from them. From the head rail again. Let's see if that picture cleared up. Overhit it, or did hit it just right? Hmm. He's gonna have to shoot it to the bottom left because he can't get enough to go anywhere else. Yeah, that uh, Brian, that that shot was a uh, that's a ESPN highlight for sure. Could be in the, uh, in the highlight reel. Oh, he hit that! He hit that ball perfect. He hit it good. He just got robbed. No, I'm just fucking gonna say here, Rob. He hit it good. In the position he came back across. I feel for you, Kev. That was a great shot. Two great shots. All right, Terrell just gonna hold some composure here. Bring that cue ball back up table for the five. Nicely played. A little short. Didn't want to be dead center here. He's got he's got a couple options. Can put the cue ball behind the eight. Lock him up. Put him in jail. He can go offensive and cut the five in. Bring the cue ball around four rails for the six.
That's the offensive shot. Bottom left. Keep all comes around four rails. Very nicely done. Perfect. Perfect textbook shot. Hey guys, don't, yeah, if you're in there, if you're in the tournament, don't forget um, old Rick McDaffer there at Q Storage. Making a great deal for you. It's like parking your car in the garage, man. You just, it's perfect. Mm. He's okay, but you know, you're, you're on the hill playing for the hot seat. You could feel a little bit of heat on this shot. Nailed it. Two rails around for the nine, and we will have a king of the hill. As long as you get to the side pocket, you're fine. You know, to the middle of the table. Don't need to come too far down. Give us that other angle. For the money shot. There it is. Terrell Morgan, King of the Hill. What a great match between these two young guys. And you're going to see these two around for a long time. Fantastic match. Well played. Well played. I know Kevin's he's disappointed, but you know what? He played fantastic. And this match could have easily gone 4 2 in his favor. So, uh,. Well, he's, he already just said, I'll be back. He said, I'm coming back for you. So, hang tight, guys. We've got some great shots. So, hang tight. We do have a couple other matches. Don Logan, Kim Malone on table 60. Ty Benfield and Brian Jacobs on 59. Ty on the hill, 3-2 of Brian. Don and Kim knotted up at one apiece. Cheat off the 
Guys, that was a sick match. Congratulations to Terrell Morgan winning King of the Hill men's B division with a lights out performance between both of these gentlemen. Lights out. So, um, got a few other matches going on. Uh, Ty Benfield, Brian Jacobs. A few more, I think there's a few more men. Uh, uh, that's in the A division, Ty Benfield and Brian Jacobs. Uh, not sure how many left are in the men's B division. Couple. I see uh, Miguel Ortiz and Kerry Beeland. So, yeah, definitely got a few more matches going between the two divisions. Oh, uh, Brian looks like he just hung. The six ball, but the seven is in a tricky spot here. Ty's gonna, folks, go on YouTube quickly, get onto table 59. Ty Benfield and Brian Jacobs. Ty's gotta come with a nice shot to get position on the seven. Nine's hanging in the side, that's not an issue, but where the six, seven, and nine are makes this a tricky, tricky out. You know what? He took this. He might have got the right option. I don't know if he. I think he could just roll the seven down the rail into the nine and make the nine on the side. I believe that's the game plan for him. He's. If you're looking on the camera, he's in fourth table down, brown shorts, black shirt, backwards hat. All right, Brian's gonna snip. He's gonna pop the seven and pop the nine, and we're gonna have a hill hill match. I, I know what Ty was thinking. He said, "Just roll the seven down." I clip the nine. I should make it. Wow, that was intense. Intense. Don't forget, classic billiards outfitters. Dress to impress. You know, do a tournament. You look good while you're doing it, man. You're going to go to the Last Call Tavern, dress to impress with your out billiard outfitters. You need some uh, office work, some uh, employers. Give Co Advantage uh, a call, and they're going to be able to help you out, get you some things that you need done for your, uh, for your office business. You need things, if you're living in the uh, Sarasota Bradenton area, you need work around the house, you need some wine clearing, you need uh, some instructional things, give Hughes handyman a uh, call. It'll get you right. Here's Hughes Handy Solutions. Meanwhile, the ladies, we have uh, Don Logan and Kim Malone. Don uh, shooting at the nine ball to go up two to one. And she does. Nice shot there by Don. What a match we got over there with uh, Ty and Brian. Uh, we got another match coming up. Looks like we have Nate Beal coming onto the feature table. I'm not sure whose opponent is yet, but we will find out shortly.
All right, guys, got a great matchup here. We have Nate Beal out of Palm Beach, Palm, Beach, Palm Bay, Florida. Runs a great event over at Pooley's, uh, doing their monthly. Big supporter in the pool community for Brevard County. They're very fortunate to have him. And we have Jose Del Rio, the owner of Stroker's Billiards, Palm Harbor, where they host the U.S. Amateurs every year. This is Jose Del Rio racking. And uh, tremendous, what a nice guy, Good. has a great room. We talk about somebody that does a lot for pool, and uh, been there for a long time, so. You got his teammates in the background, uh, Dave Stem and Big Money Mark Wathen hanging out, supporting him. So it should be, uh, should be a good match here between these two. Nate's really been playing strong this week. And Jose always plays good, so. Wow. A lot of energy and action on the ball. Came up dry, though. Don't know if he can get between the three and the four. Cut that one in just ever so thinly. for the push out. Try to come off the rail with a lot of inside spin. Doesn't like it, he gave it back. So you know what? First match, first shot, I'm not, uh, I'm not doing something silly here. Cube. That's going to hurt. Got a little squirrely for him, but he uh, came out okay. This 
might work out even better. Don't know if the night combo is easily wired or not. It, it is. He's going to go for it. Got a Hill Hill match with Don Logan and Kim Malone. Gets exciting. Love these Hill Hill matches. All right, Nate Beal with the break here. Break. Long shot on the one. Let's see what he can do to get back down to the two ball. Certainly a good shot to make the one. I don't see that being an issue. Exactly the way he had hoped. Is he going to try for another 2 9 early combo on the side? He's calling it. Oh my god, he didn't miss it by much. That was a great try.
think so.
did it again. All right, jumping in here for, uh, looks like the trail end of this match between Nate Beal and Jose Del Rio. Uh, Nate with a, a kind of unfortunate miss, but uh, left a safety. It looks like Jose can, yeah, say he, he could thin this and potentially get another safety out of it, but he's gonna open it up. But um, no matter what he does here with the three, getting on that four ball is gonna be a bit of a challenge for him. Best bet is he's going to have to probably play it forward, come up 
uh, two, three rails, get you know this side of the eight, nine, and just uh, take what the table gives you and look at that four. Not a lot of options for a safe. If he can get, if he can get closer in line with it, he could potentially get the cue ball down behind the seven, or um, he may just try to run it down the rail. It's you know going to be hard to hold to get up and back for the five with where it's sitting too, because you ideally want to be short side of that to play it down to the same corner. Yeah, so here's a look at that five hanging, you know, where it's at. If you're not straight in line in it, you know, all you're going to be able to do is play a safe. And he's going to have options from the five. I mean, if he gets there, he can safe out behind the eight as well. So let's see what he does here. Yeah, a little bit too much. That's why I was saying maybe go around the other side of the nine as opposed to trying to go up and back. Certainly kick at it and make contact, but if he moves it straight up the table, hitting it full, it's going to leave it right in the, in the jaws of that side pocket with that five as a blocker. out there but definitely the, the better option of the two like I said kicking it from the bottom side unless you hit it really hard you're just gonna put it right in the jaws of the pocket so you just want to play this a little bit of right spin it up table avoid the eight and that's if you couldn't avoid the eight he'd been okay bumping into it um, yeah, I don't think he can, I don't think he can get to it. Both players having a little laugh about it. it uh, it's been a long couple days for these guys playing. All right, he played that just about as good as he possibly could have. Run him out. His, um, angle's a little deceptive, but it looks like he can, you know, just play a nice, just a little stun shot, pocket the six. He may like to draw back, play it down into this corner. Go in the same corner. See, you know, the reason I don't like that shot is you're potentially shooting over the eight or you're impeded by the eight, but um, the shot's there. And from here, it looks like his angle is going to be moving away from the line he wants to be on for the nine, but, or I'm sorry, for the eight. So he's going to bring him closer to the rail, but um, he can play just a little stun draw and bring it right, put the cue ball back out to the center, but he's going to, going to deal with the seven ball first. So, okay, got away from him a little bit, but... I think nine's in a great, great spot. Um, it's, you know, even if he loses his cue ball here, he's going to have a lot of options. in and I apologize I just uh, got to the turn I believe they're racing to four
puts it away. So that is 4-2, Jose Del Rio. And uh, we'll be right back once we get the, uh, the next match up on the main table.
right, guys, we're back with you. Head job, Josh Gibson in there for a few minutes with you. This is the ladies' finals, nine ball. Helena Calkin, Dawn Logan. Helena has the hot seat. Dawn has to win her, defeat her twice. So this is an even race between Helena and Dawn. Neither are masters, so it is a race to three for both of them. Again, Dawn has to beat Helena twice. If Helena wins the first set, we crown our new nine ball champion. <clears throat> I want to say hey to uh, Emma Logan, Nick Western, Brittany May. Shane's been in the chat with us for a while. Thanks for hanging out with us. What a nice break by uh, Dawn. One on the side. Has a shot on the two. Long shot, though. Definitely feel she can. Pocket to two, roll forward for the three. Oh, she fired it in. She didn't mess around and roll it in. And got very good on the three ball, very makeable. Yeah, she, she, uh, she does break good. Hits it real square. Generates a lot of energy and power. She came around to see if the five passes the seven. And I'm not 100% to be honest, so we'll wait and see how she goes after this rack. <coughs> okay, so I got a few people, friends and family in here watching them to uh, Root their friends and family on. Lisa say, Lisa C in the chat saying, root for Dawn. Oh, nice shot. Good draw. Shoot that shot, nice. I think the shot here is to draw three rails around. Come all the way up and around the eight and back out for the six. <coughs> because of the angle. Oh, she made the five. Fortunately, she's not going to have a good shot on the six here. That's why I like uh, hitting that shot with a draw. Spin it around, get back to the center of the table. She's looking at kicking the six ball. Definitely pretty, uh, pretty gutsy shot here. She made a great hit on it. Oh, that's unfortunate. Well, Helena's got a love coming to the table with this setup, four balls. A lot of knowledge and experience. She's a top, uh, top shelf player. So, see how she handles this one. Say that 
I give her the commentator curse. My man Flip, sitting at White Castle. No, buddy, I'm good, but thank you. Nice shot. That was a tremendous shot. <laughs> Shane says, Chris, bring him some White Castle. He's in Bradenton. It's funny. Hmm, Flirt with the side pocket, but she's okay. Enough of it. This is call the nine. She did. been sitting for a while. Dawn's been in stroke. She's been grinding her way through. And she's uh, been hitting the ball for the last couple hours. But she's still feeling good about it. All right. Dawn takes game number one. how many women were in the nine ball and then they had 73 in the eight ball yesterday so I'm gonna say they had at least that many in the nine ball today so you're really gonna get the number one and number two players in the event right here and, uh, we're gonna be crowning a new queen here pretty soon Katie Bowes won it last year she didn't defend the nine ball this year she did defend the eight ball <laughs> Shane's, uh, he's all about it. He's like, I hope it goes Hill Hill second set. <laughs> That's pretty funny. reason she's queen of the hill. She is firing balls in and playing very well. We still have the men's division going on. Uh, over on 59, we have Jesus, I mean, yeah, Jesus Borjas and Jose Del Rio. For uh, winner moves forward, loser takes fourth place. And that should be a real good matchup to these two guys. She didn't hit it as square, she made a ball on the break. Didn't hit it as square as the last one, 6-9. Didn't really didn't move at all, actually. Well, Shane, get to work. Start clipping and cutting. It's a nice shot. She needs to get it to roll. 
Needed a little more speed to give her a better angle on the two. But she's going to play a safety here. They are playing three foul rules. She three fouled her opponent to uh, win the last match. <coughs> I think she leaked out between the six and four. If she did, Helena doesn't have much to work with anyway. She'll play a safety herself. She's a top tier player. Mm. I weigh meter with the commentator curse. Nonetheless, she uh, you've seen her make some amazing <coughs> shots. Very good player, both of them. in the side but she has to be careful she has to hit him with some draw to keep him from scratching but then she's going to take a chance of running into the six she's going to play safe actually that's a great wow what a great shot very smart great speed on that Elena can kick one or two rails Looks like she's going one. Great contact. Good separation. Well, nice shot there. start with with the uh, offensive shot so I don't know, yeah, she might have leaked out the window here she might be able to pocket that three in the upper left if she does she'll fall roll forward for the four in the bottom right that'd be in great position here it's close real close uh, she's keeling when she can make it She gave Helena a nice open shot on the one, I mean on the three. She didn't bring it back far enough. She's going to have to run into the uh, six and nine when she cuts the four. She missed the 6-4, missed the 4 on the side, but got lucky on the lead. Great hit. Side or the corner. She 
goes to the corner, she loses the cue ball a little bit more. Hopefully safe. I don't think that was a bad shot at all. Seems the shot pretty solid, but she's going to have to give up a uh, safety here. Slow towards the eight, try to get behind the six nine. Just going the other way. Great shot. Great shot. Speed. She would like that five ball to get up more to the center, closer to that head rail. Now Logan has a nice, Don Logan has a nice shot on the five. <coughs> Great shot. Uh oh. It's close, but she's okay. Uh, Helena does something when she's not shooting that is uh, uncharacteristic. She puts her glasses on. I don't see many people do that. I feel like it seems like it would. Your eyes adjust back and forth, but it's working for her. She's playing great. What a tremendous shot! But when she gets to, she gets to shoot. She takes her glasses off. So keep an eye on that. Maybe talk to her after the match about it. Seems like it would affect your um, your transition back and forth. Oh my God, this girl is on fire. Oh, that is absolutely a heartbreaker right there because she drilled it. I mean, absolutely drilled it. Yes, Valley rules. The ball before the nine, if you make it in scratch, it does spot up. Normally, every other event, you just have ball in hand on the nine. In this event, Valley rules. The ball before the nine, if you make it in scratch, the ball spots up. It just happened to be that. Uh, made it very easy for her to. Get that one. But had the ball been the nine ball been up on the head rail, you know, right on the diamond frozen to the rail. Now you gotta play position. So The nine ball in the upper four pocket. She's a winner. Break and run. She wins the game. Your new nine ball champion is crowned. Got a feel from Dawn there. She absolutely smashed the bank, split the wicket in the heart of the pocket. Cue ball comes across and just follows that right in with a scratch. That is, that's a heartbreaker for Dawn. I 
All right, here we go. We'll hit it with the break. Watch the nine ball. It's heading for that one uh, upper pocket. Try break. Don with a nice shot on the one. She'd like to be able to stop it. Maybe try to get straight in on the two so she can shoot the two and stop. Good position for the three, but then she has to come around to get good on the four. Four, five, and six. That's the problem. Ball's here in the rack. Cue ball got away from her a little bit, so now she can either back, cut the two a little bit. I don't think the two seven combo is on. It is not. I'll tell you what, she's making balls from all over the place. And she's actually not in a terrible position here to get to the four. Pocket the three in the side, draw it to the head rail with a little bit of spin. She's going to be okay. She's going to just roll up, take the cut on the four. Uh, Shane Pulshuk, absolutely no shame in second place. Not in this field with a bunch of champion top shelf players. Win, lose, or draw in this match, they should be very proud of themselves. Again. Oh, no, I think she came up short on the position, though. She needs to come out about to the spot. Hmm, tough, tough. How good is this girl? She is making shot after shot after shot. Playing fantastic. I am totally impressed. I mean, I was impressed before because watching her play throughout the week, in you know, the last couple days, but she is playing tremendous. She clipped the nine, which makes this a little tougher on the uh, seven. Sponsored by Bis uh, Billiard Bill, Bill Lister. If you want a custom cue, check him out. Um, Fort Myers, built a top-notch pool cue. Bill Lister, Billiard Bill. If you want to buy and sell, call Billiard Bill. Oh, she overcut it. She got okay though. She didn't hang it and give up a freebie here. She's been firing balls in. Well, I would have no doubt to think she could possibly do it. Yes, he has a bridge, which certainly makes it more difficult. It's a foul. And the 
is going to cost her the match. Wow. I know what you wanted to do. She just wanted to tap and roll to the ring. And just, but, um, hmm. Not, I am just shoot the seven, draw back. For the eight and the side, stop, stop, nine ball. Collect your championship. First place finish. forward to the side rail to the bottom rail just like that boom this is the championship shot right here for Helena no distractions take your time focus on the shot set yourself goal for the, the win She did it. Congratulations to Don Logan for a strong second place finish and your new West Coast Challenge Nine Ball Champion, ladies, Elena Cockett. That was a fun match. They both played so well. I am, they both were pocketing balls. Just, I mean, lights out. Very impressive. So, congratulations to Elena Cockett. Don Logan with a strong second place finish. Very impressive. Guys, hang tight. We'll have some more matches for you in a minute. Can go uh, see what's going on with the tournament director and see what we got coming up. Hang tight. We'll be right back with you. This is Gary G. Extreme Pool Challenge for the 2022 West Coast Challenge in Kissimmee, Florida. We'll be right back with you.
is in that last three. He actually won the first two sets because I, I didn't know what he was saying. And I was like, what do you mean I get this? This is a spot? The table like who did not the last three? And I yeah, couldn't get comfortable. I actually lost the first two sets. Yeah, this one has all and one of my backers well, actually backed off. Company. And the other one goes, no, kid, play over. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I ended up beating them, though. Yeah. And one of the guys played out that was in the back. And, uh, Thanks, Gary. I've been, thanks, Gary. I've been here all night. You haven't asked me. Yeah. 
Hey guys, Gary G. We're back here. We've got the second and third place match coming up between Jose Del Rio, Tim Barron, and this ought to be a real hoot. We've got Jason Richko and Dave Stem. We're going to commentate for you. And if anybody knows these two players well, it's Dave and Jason. So we're going to have some fun, have some fun, let these guys commentate. So hit them up in the chat, make them work for it, and uh, get this match to be kicking off in here just in about less than three or four minutes. So hang tight. And get ready. Yeah. <laughs> 
All right, everybody. There we go. Looks like Jose won the lag. He's going to get the first break, which is big, in the race to four alternate break. Right, and we're at the West Coast Challenge, the top three. Tim Barron, Jose Del Rio. Uh, I've drawn a blank on who's in the hot seat, but uh, these two guys are going to look to play a good match here and come and take on the winner of the hot seat match. David Cantrell from Atlanta, who was sitting here waiting for the winner of these two. David's had a really good tournament. And whoever wins this match will have to beat David twice. It's a true double elimination format. Which is good. Because normally you go through the whole winner's side undefeated and you lose one match and you're out. Right. So true double elimination is really good and you don't see it too often. Jose had a good break here. He's got a tough shot on the two. Looks like you can see it, but it's a tough shot. When he came with it. Yeah, he hit it real good. And he's got decent shape. The best you can do with it from that point. Stunned it really nice. I think Jose's getting a little flashback here. He's been playing pretty good here the last couple of matches. He lost to Timo uh, earlier in the day. And, uh, was it Hill Hill? I believe it was. I yeah. believe it was. And, you know, Tim came with some good shots in the last last game to, uh, to win it. Oh. Mm -hmm. He might have got a little roll there. Yeah, it was a missed a six, but he just didn't leave anything really clean. Hard to tell if you can cut that in from this angle. Looks like you might have room to cut it in. Looks like I'll probably put a little left-handed English on it, cut it in, and come on the other side of the seven. Be a nice shot if you execute it like that. It's there, but it's uh, not easy. Mm -hmm. 
Oh. Ooh. Wow. Wow. Uh oh. Wow, well, right. Might get unlucky. Oh, oh my gosh. Boy, oh boy. Tim opted to cross bank the six, and he made the shot like a champ. However, he got a bad roll, and the cue ball followed it in the side pocket. Which gives Jose a fairly easy three ball out. Seven's down, eight's straight in, eight's down, and uh, nine ball's pretty much straight in. Jose Del Rio draws first blood. From Strokers Billiards, Palm Harbor. Come down to Strokers. Yeah. Hold on, we got a shot call here. Strokers, Palm Harbor. Come down for the Freddy Shrimp. One of the best pool rooms in Florida. Great food, non smoking. Everything you want in the pool room. Come see Rolando. He'll fix your cue. He'll teach you anything you need to know about pool. Now Tim's racking. He's putting the two ball behind the nine. That's not a requirement from my understanding and uh, you know it makes it a lot more difficult to run out when you put the two behind the nine everybody's been racking the two up by the one so there is three fall into effect here call the nine ball Good break by Tim. And he's got a shot on the one. Gets a pretty excellent break, actually. Tied up a little 5-7, might be a little problem. Mm. jelly there. That's what we call jelly roll. I don't know. He was following that ball, so I don't know if it was like intentional or not because uh, it didn't seem like he should have been following that ball. He didn't play any kind of position yeah. on the two. I thought the hole was, I thought it was straight in. But he didn't play any kind of position yeah. on the two, which just yeah. makes me feel like he maybe he did that. Playing safe, yeah. Maybe did that on purpose. I mean, you know. Well, either way, it's a good shot. Right. He has no, he has no shot at the nine. Looks like he's playing a three-ball combo jump shot. <laughs> <laughs> Only Jose. <laughs> Only Jose. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and he hit it oh, good. How hit, do you hit, hit it? The combo. How do you hit it? <laughs> the way to go. Obviously, Jose is really feeling it right now. Justin, what's up, buddy? Justin Gilson, just stop by, say hello. Playing a little safe, he hit it a little thick. And left him a shot. That's how we play safety in Palm Harbor. 
the jump three ball combination, Jose. What is that about? Who taught you that? Yeah. <laughs> Make it, he's got, all right. So now what's he gonna do with the five? I've watched Tim do a few matches here today. Uh, he's not uh, doing anything fancy. He's just doing what needs to be done to get the job done. Yeah. He's not, you know, drawing three rails or nothing like that. He's just doing the simple stuff to get everything done. And it's paying off pretty handsomely for him. Ooh, he's playing the position for the combination, which it's a tough combo. It's off the rail a little bit. But with the five ball laying where it is, it's probably not, not a bad option. You might roll up on a, you know, play a two-way shot here. Roll up on it and miss it. Roll up on this. Yeah. Oh, 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 he made the three. Ooh. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. I'd say he missed the combo and got a, made the three, but it got a little unlucky on the leave, so... I don't know if he could thin the five and make the nine if he hits it with inside English. Yeah, he might be able to thin it and be. make it. Yeah. And at the same time, he could make the five in the corner. <laughs> I think the first option is the five, because I don't think the nine is a really good option. But so. Well, he's calling the nine, so. Yeah. Uh, he took a shot at the five. Oh, boy. Well. Did he get away with it? I think he's got an edge. If I would say he has the edge of the five ball, he can play the five-nine combo. Probably a little bottom right, cut it, back cut it into it. If I would say he can see the five, he's a favorite to make this ball. Make the five-nine combo. And found Jose a little bit here too, and he's uh, he's catching a gear here. Did lose to Tim earlier in the day, though. Oh, he, oh. Hit, a, he hit a perfect, and he put a little <laughs> he put a little bottom on it so he didn't come off the rail and scratch. <laughs> Call it perfect. I call it a little bit better than that. <laughs> he had a great. Yeah. Two nothing. Jose on the bar table. The Corona. Yeah, I mean, you know. That's perfect. See, Jose racked the one, two, three up at the top. Oh, he pattern racked. <laughs> I tried that. I'm sitting over here with you. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> it didn't, I know. Work, didn't work yeah. for me. Uh, Patting record only helps at a certain level. doesn't really help at this level. And I really wouldn't call that a pattern rack. Other than two and three up front. Uh, if it was pattern, I'd put five and six on the corners. And you don't hammer it. <laughs> yeah, Ooh, I mean, it's... he got a roll. Know. And he got a roll. And he's got, he's got a shot at the two. Wow. Got a shot at the two with. Uh, it looks like the only tough ball there is the five. Is it the four in the corner? Or the eight? I think or it's the four. Or the eight. I can't tell. Can't tell either. It looks Which like the four. Point? Yeah, four. It's the four, so yeah. Mm. It's got a little bit to do here, but you know, it's. Probably a rack he should run out. Throwing it in there. Here's the key shot here, four to the five. Come up between the five and six? And it's a race to four, alternate break. What do you think, come up between the five and the six? Just drift up, just drift, drift on up? Yeah, it looks like he's putting inside. He's just gotta be careful that he doesn't freeze on the ball. Uh, yeah, see. Yeah. 
I don't know if he had enough angle to go two rails the other way. I think he punched it to eliminate the inside yeah. English on the four ball, really. But. Let's see what he does there. Looks like he's ducking it. behind the seven. No, oh, Jose being Jose. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I, I don't know. I don't know about that. I don't know if he was trying to make that, but <laughs> yeah. I don't know if he was trying to bank that. Uh, if he did, he didn't leave himself nothing anyway. This is the one loss side. Winner of this match will be in the finals. It's a race to four with Jose up to zero. He's Looks like he's going to try and bank the six ball. It's awfully tough here. Bank the six ball cross corner and try to draw back somehow and get on a seven. That's... This is what I seen do that is Larry Neville. <laughs> <laughs> kind of a hero shot if he tries this. I don't know. Right at six sit, not it might bang cross side if he Yeah, the problem with cross side is he ended up scratching two rails in the side. Yeah. You can't get enough English on it to twist it from that angle, way right. down there. Right. Well, now he's shooting straight at it, so I don't know. Can't tell what he's doing I think here. He's trying to bank it cross side. He tried to. He can't get enough spin on it. He hit a brick. Yeah. See. Yeah. Well, Tim's got a shot. He's got a little bit of angle, so he can follow the ball and come right back up for the seven. So. I seen Tim hit this shot multiple times today. He hits it really good. Stroking the ball really well. Yeah, um, he hit it. He hit it. Oh, uh, he's going towards the corner, but he's good. He's good. Wow. And he's got a little bit of angle to come up on the nine too. So Tim had a good shot there. Here. Hey Shane, we all got a lot, a lot of faith in Tim. Tim's a nice guy and a hell of a pool player. And uh, he beat Jose earlier. And, uh, all right, we got a match here. Two to back one in, now. Yeah, gets back in the match at two to one. They're starting to draw a crowd here. It's the most people I've seen watching all day. <laughs> I'm lucky enough to call both of these guys my friends. Uh, obviously, I play at a Strokers with Jose and just a great pool hall. And Tim is the kind of guy, he's from Sarasota, so I only see him like three or four times a year. But, you know, it's like, it's like we're best friends every time I see him. He's just a great guy. Yep, he is throwing a nice pool room. I don't know if you remember, Barron's Billiards. I don't know if you've ever been there. No, but I was it, still it, in Baltimore at the time. It was, in, it it was in Bradenton. It was a nice place. Yeah. There be some action over there. It was nice. Yeah. I was still in Baltimore at the time. I've been here like 10 years, so I'm forging friendships, uh, life, lifelong friendships uh, in these times. So, uh, Tim is one of them, most definitely, even though I only see him three or four times a year. Yeah, and I, I mean, he hit that really good, yeah. just nothing. Nothing fell. And a hell of a pool player, too. I can tell you this if he called me and wanted to play scotch doubles, I'd drive the two hours or whatever it took to, to go play with him because he's that type of guy and that type of pool player. So. Absolutely. He's going to try to put a little bottom right. I don't know if he's going to come between the eight and the five. Yeah. Just <coughs> he, hit, he hit that really good. Really good. Put 
put a little inside English on there to come up between there. Be careful. Be careful. You're going to get jacked up over the ball. Okay. Can't tell if the five goes in the side. Hard to tell. It looks like he's looking to shoot it in the corner. Why did he shoot the five? He shot the wrong ball. He shot the wrong ball. So yeah. did I do. I thought he was. Yeah, lying. I mean, you know. I, I thought, thought so he, too. I, I mean, was I lining it up to see if it would go. That's right. why I didn't. I knew the four was on the table, but yeah. Just looked like he was like maybe seeing where he needed to be for position wise. How many coronas are sitting over there? Oh, he's, <laughs> <laughs> he's had a few, but you know. Wow. He's definitely in stroke though, because yeah, he, he, he fired that ball. Really he fired that ball in the hole. He didn't have any problem making the ball. <laughs> and he's laughing about it. So that's typical Jose. He's laughing about it. It's uh, I think Tim, what's Tim doing? He's trying to get position on the six. He's trying to figure trying the best to, like, way to roll get that, there. Roll that ball. <laughs> now he's looking at the carom. Ooh. Ooh. That's a tough carom from yeah, there. You know, these balls going down the rails here, I've seen a lot of them come out. Right. Especially from that side. And if he doesn't get right on this, or if he gets jacked up on the seven, is going to be is difficult. He probably needs to come on the other side of the seven, try to get in between. See, and that's you know. I don't think I, he's quite there. I think that's a little better than being a little further. At least he can. Cue, yeah, cue he's on not the jack. Ball. He's not jacked up, so. You know, and he doesn't have to worry about the scratch with the eight ball in the way. So you got to hit it a little inside, a little high inside, and just cut it. He did it good, though, and if he hits it good, he's out, so. And he hit it good. Oh, real he hit it good. good. He hit it real good. Yep. Fall off the rail with a little top right. Standing yeah, on that side, so he's got an angle to just roll that's down. That's a pretty the shot, yeah. It's perfect, pretty much perfect right there. Okay, looks like we're going to have a 2 2 match here. Jose breaking. Okay. I see uh look at Shane Polshuk commenting. Uh Shane, you know, if you're a friend with Tim and you're watching him play then and you're learning from Tim, then you're doing you're you're on the right track because Tim's a great guy and Tim's a really good pool player. Uh, so uh, my suggestion was keep doing what you're doing and following Tim around because uh, you can't go wrong with that. Absolutely. All right. Two to two. Got us a match here, huh? Jose's got the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. <laughs> <laughs> what are you saying, Jason? What are you uh, saying? Nah, you can't. <laughs> When you're hitting them hard like that, yeah. you know, any the ball's going anywhere. Look at this. Look at this. Oh, oh boy. Oh. He gets a bad roll. Uh, we're looking at a push out here, I would expect. Sit down, Tim. He's pushing out. Or <laughs> he could actually maybe hit it and uh, freeze him behind there, put a little bottom yeah. right and just draw back if he can get to it and just freeze him on the uh, five. Yeah, that's what he's looking to do, isn't it? He's got to make sure. Yeah, he hit it. He hit it good. 
So the teams play, they start tomorrow. There's what, three divisions? Uh, Is it three divisions? Three divisions, from what I understand. There's a gold division, and a, I don't know what they're calling the other two divisions, because we're in the gold division, so I don't really pay too much attention, but there's 24 teams in the gold, and 116 teams total. Yeah. I'm not going to do the math in my head right we're, now, we're, so we're, I don't know what. We're that, starting at 8.30 tomorrow morning. That works out between the other two divisions, but uh, so it'll be a packed house tomorrow. Um, it's five players on a team. It's uh, well, five and uh, one. What is it? One game of eight ball alternate. You have to play each yeah, other. It's like, and um, it's five points. It's yeah, it's it's like it's a by points. It's, it's not like a race. Uh, race if you're familiar with something? if you're familiar with BCA, it's like a a points race where like if one person wins, then it's how many how many balls the other guy made. So the guy has uh, high balls and he made and he wins. He gets ten points, and the other guy made three low balls. Then it's ten three. Is it to fifty or something like that? Well, it's a uh, three rounds, so you play until the other team can't catch up. Can't catch up. Yeah. Tim's pulling the jump cue out. I think he's going to try to hit the left side of the ball so it can he can put it behind the three, behind the five. Oh, and he just caught the t he just caught the top of the three. Now this is a little tricky here. One goes, two goes past the nine, but the three. Three, three doesn't five. have yeah. three doesn't have very many pockets either, so it's oh. Point save here. I'm going to try to carry him to six in. Thanks, Dylan. We appreciate it. Trying to get past the nine to come up for the five. Hey Shane, you're watching one of the best streams in uh, Florida, or best streams really in the country. I mean, these guys from Extreme uh, do a very good job. Their cameras are top notch. The announcers, uh, you know, hey, yeah. hit or miss, <laughs> hit or miss with the announcers, yeah. but, but you know, the uh, uh, the cameras and the, and the shooting and just oh, being able yeah. to look at everything, it's 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 really high level. Yeah, the high, whole setup is really good. And they they do a lot, and they put a lot of effort into this setup. I wish more tournaments would do it. Tim's got a tough shot here. I don't know what he's going to opt to do. He uh, doesn't really have a clear shot at the five. I mean, he can hit it, but he tries to bank it. You know, he gets a seven. He tries to bank it, and a seven ball goes in. So Wow. That's a good break for Tim. Uh, he should he should get out of here. Should be out from here. Little five ball, six in a side, eight in a side. Yeah, not too much problems. Well, he might have got a bad thing on he might have got a bad angle on the seven on the six ball here. Should be okay. He's looking like he's okay. Roll a six ball in the corner, eight in the side. As long as he doesn't roll too far. It's hard to tell from this angle. Mm. 
I think he's good. He's drawing back with a little inside English to try to spin it off the back rail. No, no, he didn't even do that. It's nice. All right, looks like Tim's going up three to two here. I thought when he hit it, he hung the, hung the nine ball, but uh, it it went in. All right, Tim's on the hill. He's breaking. You were playing pool against him 25 years ago. Showing your age there, well, Billy. Tim looks good <laughs> for his age. <laughs> Yet yeah, every year Tim keeps getting better and better. One of these years he's gonna snap off the US amateur. I know it. He's a pretty much a yearly qualifier, that's for sure. Yeah. And he qualifies out of strokers, which um as everybody knows has uh, some pretty good players out of it. Uh, commentating with one of them. Uh, Jason Richko who has won the US amateurs. I don't remember. What was it, 1990 or something? It doesn't matter, you know. <laughs> it doesn't matter, you know. It's, it's, uh, you won it, and that's forever. Nobody could ever take that title away. Yeah, that was a good day. It's a good weekend. you got to have a good weekend. you oh, got to get rolls. I'm sure. you got to play sure. good. No doubt. No doubt. Okay, he broke. Tim's having a hard time with the break. He's hitting them really good, just coming up dry. And Jose jacked up shooting the one across the table, which is extremely hard. Yeah. This is probably the key shot of the whole match here. If you miss this shot, it's probably over. It's a, yeah, that's a tough spot for Jose because if he makes it, he can get out. If he misses it, then yeah. Tim can get out so and really there's nowhere to roll out you know there's, there's nowhere there's, to push there's, that, there's not a safe there's not much else going on here and he's jacked up over a ball and table length cut so it's uh it's just not an easy not an easy position to be in He did good. Look at oh, this. Look, look, look at this roll. He did roll. good, but he got a bad roll. Oh, boy. The one ball good, but the came, key ball came up to one and pushed the two into a position where he has to either kick at it. Uh, I think it's too close to jump. I don't think it's a jump at this point. I think it's strictly a kick at this point. And again, you know. He's gonna have to put. Well, hmm. I don't know. This here. is this is this is an odd choice. Yeah, that was hard an odd, to do that. That was an odd choice. Well, it's basically up to Tim to get out here. Pretty much it. I don't know about the four ball. It's yeah. hard to tell. Does the four ball go in the corner? I think the the four does look a little tough at this point. Uh, Let's see, you should be able to tell from this angle once he gets out of the way. Uh, you know, it might go, but getting to where... Well, the five's hanging in the side. He's but, just got to make it. Yeah, but getting to that point is going to be a little bit tough. Think, yeah, you where, get the way the three ball's laid, I mean, you know, we're, we're, you get ball in hand here, but where do you play the cue ball to be able to get back to where you need to be on the four? It looks like he's ducking. Is he playing a three ball combination? No, he's ducking. Uh, maybe not. Is oh. he playing a two four nine? I'm not sure if he called it or not, but it looks like that's what he's playing. I think he called it. And he drilled it. Look at this. Oh my oh. goodness, he drilled it. He drilled it. Well deserved. Good shot. Well, Tim's going to be in the finals here with David. 
that was a pretty impressive shot. Wow, oh, I want to see the replay on that. Yeah, I just I just replayed it back. I think it was a push. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Looking at the replay, uh, you fouled. Yeah, it was, was a foul. Was a foul. foul. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody. Uh, Finals will be up soon. Hey, Tim played a great match. Tim that's played a, a great match. That's off to Tim. Congratulations. Jose needs another Corona. Thank you. 
All right. Hey, you guys, this is Flip. I'm back on uh, my day two, uh, and I'm joined in the booth with Wesley White. How are you, pal? I'm doing pretty good. Good. So we are actually um, in for a heck of a match. This is the finals of the nine ball. Uh, Dave Kentrell and Tim Barron. I believe Dave is going to be our king of the hill. Correct? Yep. Okay. And then, so Tim will, this is true double elimination, so Tim will have to beat Dave twice. And, um... Yeah, Dave okay. Kentrell. So it looks like Dave has won the lag and will be breaking off first. And, uh, we're getting underway. This is going to be race to five, I believe? Uh, I think it's race to four. It's race to four. It yeah. is. Okay, cool. Awesome, awesome. So do you know these players? Uh, yeah, David's on my uh, master's team. Oh, okay. So, so you know him very well. Yeah, we play in the team event tomorrow. No, nice. Awesome. Yeah, teams, I saw teams started to roll in tonight. So getting more and more players here. And the good thing about that, too, is that, you know, they, the, um, the crew that run this event, you know, they try to, you know, make minis go a little bit longer. They tend to do things that players tend to uh, requests like I, I heard of a hundred dollar mini that they were going to try to do yesterday and things like that for the players yeah. if enough of them wanted to do that so which is good to see so. all right so Dave is going to be breaking us off <coughs> hey Relix how are you pal can I see you again oh, wow what a great break way to uh, as they say squat the rock or stop the cue ball in the middle of the table and unfortunately ended up getting kicked down to the um, in the in the break box, but he still has a pretty decent shot on the two ball. Yeah, I think he's going for the nine. Yeah, you know it's kind of a two way. I would right. think that if he decides to do like a slow roll on the two ball, um, it, he might actually be able to make both of them. I would think. Let's see. Nice shot. Oh, wow. Okay. Not a bad shot. Yeah, you got to be on the eight. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Not sure if that was quite intended, but it definitely worked out for him. So uh, Tim's going to be coming to the table. Uh, he does have a kick shot for the cross side if you wanted to try to go for that or maybe try to make a kick safe of some sort. Okay, so yeah, it looks like, for the side. Yeah, it looks like he did go for the side and it looks yeah. like it worked out for him. Could be worse. Yeah, absolutely right. So, so who's all out there, guys? Who, um... Who are my viewers? And uh, Sandy, I see you out there. Good to see you again. I hope you're doing well. And I'm actually looking at both uh, YouTube and Facebook on my phone so I can try to get an idea of my viewers. Good shot there. Very nice. Very nice. Very nice big shot. Watch the scratch. Okay, good shot. He's an angle or not. He's straight in, it's tricky, but if yeah, he, if he's he can go forward two rails, he's fine. Yeah, if he can, I think he was looking to just to make sure that the five went past the seven. That way he can just essentially just make the right. four ball if that's an option, which um, maybe it will be. Let's see. Yeah, looks like that's what he's trying to do. Especially while, wow, okay, a little bit, a little hard, but. I don't know if the six passes the nine. No, no. no. So I'm going to go forward down for the side. If it goes past the nine. Yeah, I'm not sure. I mean, with the score being 0-0, zero, zero, it's hard for me to see a lot of players being more ambitious than uh, they normally would. So it's calm. Is it a called nine ball? Looks like it. Oh, he's, that's kind of weird. So he's playing a combo cross bank? Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. Is he back cut in the front? I don't know. I'm not sure. Um, thank, uh, Shane, thank you so much, pal. Let's see what he's he doing. He's playing the side. He's playing the save. I don't know what he's yeah, looking at. I don't know. Uh, I think he's just playing safe. Yeah. Okay, to go for the side. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. I guess he was trying to yeah, yeah. just undercut it a little bit. 
Good imagination there. I definitely didn't even see the cue going into the nine like that. So, okay. Yeah, David should be good here. Just got to roll it in two rails. Yeah. Get on the six. And with how firm he would have to hit it to make it, I would like to see him hit it with a little bit more pace just to just make his accuracy on the shot is there like that. Yeah, good shot. Um, I see a lot of players will tend to kind of hit that a little bit slower just right. to make sure that they don't overrun the cue ball. But he hit that about perfect, just draw it straight back. And you, know, you can essentially try to get straight in on the seven and being where the eight ball is. You don't really need to do really do too much. Exactly. Good shot. First game leading That's uh, David. Oh, that is yeah. David. I'm sorry yeah. about that. Okay. So Dave's going to get our first game. Leading one nothing. All right. Yeah, this table's been breaking really loose. Yeah, I really? I played on it earlier, and yeah. my opponent made three or four balls every time, single time he broke. So. Yeah, I know. And, and wasn't it uh, that Gary was talking about asking him what kind of break he would use? Right. It was just a just a – Hundred dollar break cue right. with just a like a white diamond tip of some sort, right. <laughs> and I remember coming up in the game. Some of my best breaks I got were just from a nothing of a break cue. It's exactly. like that's crazy, and you just don't don't get it, you know. So got these players that are spending thousand dollars on break cues, and you come out with like a wall of bush good, <laughs> slam it. So, but uh, Mr. DK himself, how are you, pal? I figured you'd be. Uh, this being in Central Florida, you'd be coming down for this. I hope you're doing well up there, buddy, with your uh, family and everything going on up there. Dave Kennedy, miss you, pal. All right. Okay. Does have a piece of the one to try to play some kind of a safe. Yeah, it's kind of tricky to yeah. play safe from here. Mm -hmm. You might even just push early. But yeah. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I don't know where you would even play safe from here. Yeah, I'm not it's sure tricky. either. I mean, feathering it under the edge of the two, but the cue ball. Maybe trying to come off the bottom rail and send the cue right up against the back of the two on that edge there. Yeah, that's, yep, the, that's the one I was looking at right there. Yeah, did good. Yep. Very nice. Um, he might still have the one rail kick. Um, yeah, it looks like it. But he might have to use just a touch of inside English on the ball to create that angle there. He's like, oh, he's coming off this rail. Yeah, okay. Maybe just hit straight bottom. We'll kind of stick there. Mm -hmm. Maybe go past the seven and yep. to the end rail. Oh, wow. Almost made it. Good shot. Wow. Okay. Now, I don't know if he quite has the cut to let the eight ball slow his cue ball down to leave him on the two ball. He might be able to. It looks like it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's what he's looking at. Yeah, he's looking at it to see if he can go there. And if not, he'll just need to play this just a little harder than pocket speed and just come off that side rail about a diamond, and he should still be okay for the rest of the rack. Yeah, the only danger is getting behind the eight. Mm -hmm. I think he can avoid that. Absolutely. It might be a little too thin the way he was looking at it. So. Yeah, I'm thinking if he was off the rail, he can use a little bit of bottom to help him ensure that he right. goes into that eight ball, but even then it would be tough. Yeah, he was a little thin, Ooh, yeah. so he was trying to cheat the pocket a little thick. Yep. Uh, just yeah. undercut it a little bit. I think he's going to go two rows behind the 6-3, probably. Yeah. yeah, Shane, I know I got the players confused even now. It's like i got to 
watch him keep score so I see who's playing who. <laughs> Good oh, shot wow. there, wow. Hit it real thin. I don't think he's trying to hit that thin, but. Yeah. This is a tough shot here, too. Yeah. He's got, I think he has to do kind of the same thing, just hit it really thin, try to get behind the eight. Is it possible for him to go rail first? And, and I don't think he can hit the one as full as he would want doing that. I think it's off the rail a little too yeah. much for that. Yeah, okay. I think he's just trying to get behind the eight, eight a little thick, though. Mm, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, it was a tricky shot, though. Yeah. <coughs> so shoot this with a little high inside, go straight up the middle of the table and lay for the two ball where he's standing. Exactly. <laughs> Yeah, he's a longer longer open bridge on his side of the two balls. I would say how he should bridge that. Just a touch his, inside should hold it, yeah. yeah. I think his sight picture would be a little bit better. Good shot. Grow some legs. Yeah, you got that. He's got us. Problems here. Just be able to get on the three, four, connects to the six. Yeah, I think floating forward on the three to play it in the side is kind of what I would do. Because if you're drawing it, you got to draw it to the shot line. See, now it's, yeah. you know, not to say he still can't get out, but he has to figure it out. To get, does he want to go three rails around the table or try to slow roll it because the four's off that rail enough to where he can maybe play it down to the corner? Yeah, I think foot well, he's natural, just a straight top, goes mm -hmm. three rails around. Yep, play the four in the uh, corner. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. The shots are a little tricky, though, in, the, yeah. in this angle. So. Just make sure his lines are right, because that side pocket is really big, especially if you hit this ball firm. Right. Oh, he oh, banked well, he at it. I'm surprised he did that. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe, oh, but it came, up, it came up a little far, though. Yeah, you know, with the four being off the rail like it is, it's one of the things where, I, you know, I I would say this shot's probably a 60 percent, 60-70% shot yeah. for him. So, I mean, at the score being what it is, is it a gamble that you would take? I would think so. Yeah, he's got a shot for sure. Yeah. Hit it real good. Very nice. Oh, oh wow, that's a unlucky. Ball. Goodness. That's real unlucky. Yeah. Jump shot looks like it's got a kind of a steep back cut on that, and it brings that corner pocket into play for a scratch. So, right. I mean, this jump is there, but I think there's too many risky things that can happen. Yeah, I think yeah. I'd probably just jump cross corner if I was going to jump it. Okay, yep. yeah. Nice. I hit that Monday night on league against somebody. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's a tough shot, but. Yeah. The only other thing you really do is kick at it and try to stick it under the nine a little yeah. bit. Do you see any kind of a jump safe there? Um, not really. I don't only, there are only three balls on the table. It's yeah, I know. So, yeah. yeah, I think you just kind of go for something offensive and if you miss, mm -hmm. just hope to get lucky, I guess. But yeah. he's kind of... Can you go for the side pocket and use enough bottom to take the scratch out of play? Possibly, but... I don't really like jumping when you're cutting that much because no, you know. can you can go off the table pretty easily. Not only that, with that length of the shot, I'll find players will tend to hop over their contact point. <laughs> right, right. You know, over the object ball. Especially on the seven footer, it's mm -hmm. easy to do that. Yeah. But let's see. Looks like he's jumping to the side. He did yeah, jump, he did. bank it. Good shot. Wow. Okay. Yeah, he did what I was thinking. Yeah, Just of course. Yep. But okay. So yeah, David should be fine. You just roll it in yeah. anywhere on the table is really fine. Yeah, so. absolutely. Right, that was pretty unlucky. You hit that four ball real good down the rail and just straight into the six. Yeah. So. No, I wouldn't mind seeing him open up his stroke like that and play the eight in the side. Yeah, he can hit it firm. Yeah, I don't really like a little bit more confidence. Watch the scratch. Watch the scratch. Ooh, not even close. <laughs> <laughs> it's cold in here, so yeah. I think that's why that ball didn't go in. This backer probably took a shot of whiskey after that one. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. Why? 
What is that, buddy? Come on, pal. That's a crazy. Uh, gave, gave the game away. Okay. Mm. Yeah, I mean, that shot's still missable because he's jack mm -hmm. jacking up trying to stop the ball. So, yeah. I mean, hit the seven a little off. So, but I mean, it's still yeah. a shot he's supposed to make. Yeah, absolutely. One to one now. Yeah. So, what room do you play out of? I play Q's in Marietta. Oh, you're out of Georgia. Okay, yeah. cool. That's where me and David both play. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah I went up there, oh, gosh, about a year ago to, is it Corner Pockets? And um, it's a big tournament. They do um, two brackets, 150-man field. They, oh, okay. Is it Corner Pockets? I well, there's Mr. Q's, but I don't, I don't think I know Corner Pockets. Yeah, it's east of Atlanta by like 20 minutes. Okay. Yeah, I don't I can't I don't think know. about it, but... Um, Man, it's an amazing 150-man field. When I went there, they pulled 50 blind bids for the Calcutta. Oh, wow. Insane. And they ran it around the clock. My match wasn't called till 3 in the afternoon. They went nonstop until 5 the next night. Oh, wow. It was crazy. So insane amounts of money. I forgot. If any of our viewers out there know what pool room I'm talking about, uh, chime in. It's, I'm, I'm drawing a blank on it. Yeah, there's not many... I mean, Johnny Archer and uh, Rodney Morris opened up a place. I haven't checked yeah. it out yet, but... Yeah, let me see. It's Corner Pocket, I think it's called. Mm -hmm. Corner yeah. Pocket Birds. Wow. Good break on that. Yeah. No real problems here. Just we can get straight on the two. Stop, stop, stop. Mm -hmm. right, so. Yeah. I mean, this table is just breaking very easy. I don't know if it's... Because it's colder in here a little bit, I don't know. Maybe, yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. just interesting. I've noticed that in every match. It's freaking really easy. Uh -huh. Wow. Okay. Should be okay. Yeah. Uh, stop, stop, stop. I mean, ideally you'd want to bring it back just a touch so that you don't have right. to come to the bottom and back up for your six ball. But if you have to, you have to. Looks like he's using top, so let's see how he's hitting the shot. Wow, what is going on, guys? Got away with it. Maybe. Yeah, can't tell if he can make it. Yeah, I'm looking over the monitor now. It looks like he can make it, and if he hits it right, he might be able to go around the nine ball. Yeah. <clears throat> if not, he can just thin it and then just swing the key ball around, but... Must be really close if he's still looking at it. Yeah. Yeah, that looks pretty tight. And there it looks like it goes. Yeah, I think it does. It's just a matter of um, how he's feeling over the shot. He's calling the nine ball, I think, just in case. Yeah, ideally. He's, he's going for okay. it. Okay. He must not have the angle to just roll it in around the nine. He's just kind of gambling a little bit of position. Wow. Yeah, I don't know about that shot. Yeah, I don't either. We got a look at five tied up. Yeah, and the five doesn't look like it could really goes anywhere. I don't know if he can hit it thin and break out the five one rail, but he's looking at playing safe somehow. But mm -hmm. bank shot, yeah. Even that looks tight. If it's yeah. frozen, that's going to be real hard. But yeah, I, I don't think it goes. I mean, he it is possible to cut the two ball into the side and try to use maybe straight top and maybe a, just a touch of inside right. to go for the breakout. But, yeah. that's, God, that's such a 1-1. One, one. probably what I would shoot. But yeah. <clears throat> if he's going to go for I it, just, that's the shot. I feel like on part tables you have to play aggressive uh -huh. for the I'm most sure. part. Yep. It's very different than nine footers for sure. But yeah, it's it's a tricky spot. No, oh, that's right, John, uh, Johnny. Thank you, pal. Yeah, big time billiards, and then there's something else. I haven't played big time. Um, I forgot what the other one was. But yeah, you're right, Johnny. Thank you, pal. 
There's uh, Pockets and... Pockets, that's the one I'm talking oh, about. Oh, okay. And Covington, yeah, yeah. Covington, yes, that's the one I'm talking yep. about. Yeah, yep. I've played there a few times. It's a nice room, actually. Yeah, it's a great room. Right. I couldn't believe it because I, uh, I went up there with my uh, buddy Jesus because he used to play out of that room when he lived up there. So he brought me up there. And I had... Oh, wow, what a shot. So I had to fly in because I was working the night before. You might have screwed. Oh, wow. Screwed. So my flight was at 7.30 in the morning. By 10.15, that... By 10.15, I was standing in the pool hall. Insane. I was like, man, it was so easy to get there. Yeah, yeah. And uh, they ran me for the Calcutta. I didn't... I should have... I'm thinking about it. blind bitted myself. Because... The guy running the auction goes, all right, next is Flip. Let everybody in the field know he's the only guy that flew in here specifically for this tournament. That'll kill your action. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like, what are you doing to me, dude? <laughs> My freaking buddies are laughing. They're laughing. Out the gate, guy goes, $100. I'm like, oh, God, you know. So I try to get my action. I, I think I got myself to 180, and I said I'm done. You know, and, and uh, I, if I would have, if they would have cashed out in my bracket, I would have cashed. But because I made it just before the cash out, where they bring both brackets together. Right, the high and the low side. Yeah, yeah. and the, and those of y'all that are listening in and don't know as far as the format, it is a great format. Is that what they'll do? Is they'll take your high your high handicap field, which is from 6 to all the way up to 13, I believe. Yeah, Nathan Rosa yeah. thinks is a 13. Um, Randy Jordan plays Randy, out there. Too. Yeah, he's, Randy he's Jordan. He's a solid player. Yep. Yeah, so they'll start there. So that's the only... Wow, what a shot. That's the only time that you'll be playing your skill player in your bracket. The only time you'll be playing opposite, like the only time like me as a 7 might play a 3 is if I've already made the money in my bracket. So, uh, which, which, yeah. which is well. So it actually usually favors the higher bracket mm -hmm. because there's less players in the high bracket. Exactly, yeah. No. But it, uh, I liked it. I really, I've been, I've been really wanting to go back, but I got a new job and everything. So but yeah. it's, it's a great, great tournament. You know, yeah, it's a lot of fun. A lot of money. <laughs> right. Yeah, the so, get pretty wild. Oh my God, it's 50 blind bids? <laughs> How is that possible? Oh yeah, it's it's pretty nice. That's crazy. So, so if you are listening there, they do a great job on this tournament. But yeah. <laughs> so all right, back to the action. So if the if the five is frozen, he could. Throw Can he it. force it through the nine? Right, he could throw it in. It's kind of a one pocket shot. Low right. Or low much left. Straight, straight bottom. Straight bottom. Okay. Yeah, yeah. If he hits it almost straight on, yeah. but if it's off at all, it's. It doesn't really throw. Yeah, but. and I and, and I got to be careful. I know I have a tendency to talk loud. And those of you guys who might know, our um, commentator's desk is literally like ten feet from the table. Yeah. <laughs> so we got to kind of whisper. And they have good enough technology where we can do that. So, <clears throat> um, for the uh, corner pockets, I think they made me a seven, if I'm not mistaken. Um, Maybe a six, but I think it was a seven. Um, yes, no, I, you know, I. The seven would be in the high side. I'm trying the to think. Cut is at seven, I think. Maybe it was a six, and I played Jesus, and he was a seven, or I was a seven, and he was an eight. I'm, I forgot what he was. He was one higher than me. So. Let me just punch it. Uh, uh, yeah, that, uh, was a tr uh, that was a tricky spot. So. <clears throat> Fine here. I mean, it's a tough shot on a nine footer, but I'm a seven footer. Should be fine. Okay. 
to get that up ball more accurate if you hit a little of speed, but. David should have just shot that with straight bottom and come all the way to the table. It's, I really don't like slow rolling balls like that. But. Okay, sorry, I had to step away for a quick second. Uh, it's David's break. So is Tim on? Is Tim. it 3 to 1, Tim? Yeah, it looks like Oh, okay. Yeah. Right. So David has to, he won the hot seat, so Tim has to win both sets. Oh, okay, so Tim will have to win both sets. Okay, right. I was thinking it was the other way around, so. It's like both of them are struggling a little bit. Yeah. Did they have a lot of downtime before their match? David did for yeah. sure. He okay. waited about, I'd say, three hours. Wow, well, okay. Yep, that'll definitely do it. Now, again, there are available tables. But, right. You know, the oh, he said he was out there. listening to music in his car. So. <laughs> yeah. This table's been breaking very easy. So it's a pretty big favorite to make a ball. I might have jinxed him. So. Oh, no. Break try if you try. I don't really see any problems here. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, I don't really see any issues. Just make sure that he uh, gets to the bottom of the rail for the three ball and doesn't try to play any gaps. Right, he exactly. should be fine. Yeah. You know, ideally, he'd like to have the cue ball frozen to the rail. So it would be oh, easy for him to... I thought he could just hold it, but okay. Yeah, he got a little thin on this one. So is he trying to do this with inside I and think spin gonna, down? Right, I think he's going to go between the 5-9 and play the 3 past the 4, yeah. That's sketchy, okay. Yeah, that's tough. Okay, that's all right. Now back cutting it and going between the 9-6, going straight up and back to play the 4 in the same pocket. I, mean, I would play safe here. I would just stick him behind the 4. Right, and, uh, all right. Feeling his weenies a little bit here. Yeah. Yeah, that's what, that's yeah, that's okay. what I would have done right there. Flip, what's safe? <laughs> I'm telling you, even my, my my league players are like, Flip, no, why? why? Why don't you want to play safe? I'm like, oh, I don't know. Yeah, safe is boring. Yeah, come on. I'm going to shoot safe and you play a forward. Right exactly. <laughs> come on, and it's dead every time. <laughs> So open, there's not really many good kick safe opportunities. No, I don't. I mean, I'm a jumper, so like, this is a shot where I would at least maybe a jump safe of some sort. I don't know if I'm a try. Yeah, I think it was a little too close to the floor to jump. Yeah, really? okay. yeah. Mm -hmm. so I think he played it right. Lose a little speed and just hope to get lucky a little bit. Yeah. So, and, and I'm sorry I meant to ask, are they, uh, do, is it called 9 ball? Yes, it's it called It is called 9, okay. Okay, so it's 2, to, is it 2 to 1? Yeah. Two to one. He must, yeah, I think he must have corrected this. Okay. Looks like he might be able to shoot a little bit of left and try and throw the 9 in. I think it's a little thin is to carry him the 9 in, yeah. Okay. I think he's looking at just thinning it, go behind the 4 maybe. Okay. Kind mm -hmm. of like a one pocket and try to throw it out. Looks like it's kind of tough. <laughs> James, pretty sure Tim is laying the groundwork for the B division next year. <laughs> he called the nine ball. I thought he could have yeah. used left English and maybe trying oh, to throw it in. Bump. Yeah, it didn't help him. Yeah. yeah that's a tough shot. I mean, I don't think it was pretty makeable, but. Yeah. Yeah. 
hit it from good. back and forth. I don't know about slow rolling it, but yeah, he no, could. Yeah, definitely, definitely go back and forth. Yeah. Yeah, just like that. Watch the five ball. Hit it full. Good shot. Makes it a little trickier, but it should be fun. Yeah. And you were in the center table, which would be good. Yeah. Stay yeah. under the side and just take the longer shot. Yeah. That depends on how thin he is. He might be able to hold it. I was thinking with the five being off the rail like it is. Yeah, he was trying to go back and forth by short side. Yeah. yeah. That, that's probably the right shot. Yeah. But he hit the ball a little thick. That's kind of why he came up short. Yeah. Yeah, it looks like he's going to put the straight back here. Shape is natural, so. thinking about where with the score being one to two I mean yeah the shot's pretty simple but given the circumstance and right. what's going on it's one of the things I, I mean any bank is missable for yeah. sure so. Uh -huh. so maybe if he was on the hill or something like right. that then yeah but I could have I would like to see him try to play some kind of a save uh, let's see I think <coughs> just basically straight top go three rails here yeah you put a little left on this one yeah Nice shot. Yeah, just make the ball and you're good. Yeah. Forty-one viewers in our uh, Facebook. So thank you everybody for tuning in there. If you hadn't done so, if you can help us out and like and share our stream, it would be greatly appreciated. Trying to get our viewership up. It's two to two. All right then. Team's um, breaking. It seems like neither of them really had a problem getting a shot in the break, but they're just kind of struggling to stay in line. Yeah. Tim got a little thin on that five ball or four and missed that straight back, so. Yeah. yeah I think just tournaments are just long. It just seems like fatigue kind of gets to people. Yeah, they are. You know, they got to me pretty bad, but. Yeah. And, they, and you know, one of the things I actually do like the fact that they do is they make it a point to have, like, matches longer in the day, so they're not, like, trying to do so much to force things in a, such a tight time space during the day, so, right. um, which makes it easier on the players, especially when they start rolling in teams and things like that. So, uh, yeah, if you guys haven't come out, man, you got to check this place out. I mean, it's like a mini Vegas out here. Yeah. Three tournament great. rooms. They got our, this one, another little small room, with like four or five tables, and a bigger tournament room with That's how many are in that one? Uh, it's 59 tables. That's crazy. 53, something yeah. like that. I guess all, it's 53. All diamonds, and they play perfect. Oh, yeah, no zero issues. They've all no. rolled dead straight. Yeah. So definitely look look it up, man. West Coast Challenge. Uh, get their events and what's going on, man. They're doing an amazing event. Mm -hmm. so it looks like you can just roll it in, play the two up past the side in the corner. Okay. Went for the hit, and it uh, looks like it worked out for him. Good shot. Yeah, I think he was playing for the other corner, but okay. he ran into it. It was fine. Yeah. So, so I'd, like, I'd like to see him draw underneath the six instead of trying to go between the six five. Yeah. I'll draw like underneath that. it. It'll open up the angle for him on the four ball a lot easier. See what I mean? I mean, he got there, but it's a sharp angle, I think. And, and to each his own. I mean, right. he's still going to get out, but. 
I would have liked, I personally would have drawn underneath the six. We wouldn't have had to hit the ball as hard either. I'm surprised he didn't play for the other camera. Yeah. He seems to be content to go up table a lot in such position. Yeah. Um, you know, Shane, I really don't know. I know when Gary uh, gets gets on the mic, um, don't know if it's going to be tonight or not, but he'll definitely be the one to ask on that question. I actually I hadn't heard that um, on my end, so I do apologize. Have you, how about yourself? Have you heard anything on that? Yeah, it's my first year being here, no. so. Okay. Yeah, I don't know anything about that. Yeah, I don't know. Mm. Oh, I hit that real quick. Nice shot there. Wow, very nice. Yeah, he struck the real side mm. shot. Mm. I don't know if there's six passes or seven. I think it does, but. Yeah. If it doesn't, he's in trouble for sure. But yeah, yeah. He, he was definitely playing for the other corner, but. Looks like he's back cutting it. No. Rifles it in. Unfortunately, didn't get there in the shape, but. Yeah, I don't know if he just understroked it, and didn't put enough draw on it, or he was trying to go forward two rails. No. It's hard to tell. For strictly ball pocketing percentage, because of how far the seven is off the rail, I like seeing him cut this all the way down. Just for ball pocketing. Position, everything like right. that. Position is going to be he tough. can use high inside and bank across side. He can back cut it, but he's going to let the cue ball go. He just banks. He banks safe. Banks it. Maybe tries to put the seven underneath the nine. So he does have options. Yeah, I don't like playing safe, but I think I think the safe is probably just play object ball to the nine, probably. Yeah. It's just too difficult to get on the nine, I think. Mm -hmm. but I don't know, man. I like to see him rifle this all the way down. <laughs> Jack up with low inside and spin it down to play them. <laughs> There's for the views. Yeah. <laughs> is this an A division? Yeah, Johnny, it is. This is the A division. Yeah, I feel like this playing the distance to get behind the nine it plays a lot better on the nine footer than the oh, seven footer. It does, absolutely, it does. Yeah, this is A division. Yep. Yeah. Finals of the A division. He's playing safe. Oh, he freaking drills it. That was a great what shot. What a great shot. Because he had to stun follow it to get down there and he had it perfect. Yeah. That's a great shot. Great shot. Wow. That was a great shot. Uh, amazing. So he got a little out of line, but he recovered with a great All shot. Right then. So. so Tim gets on the hill in the first set. Wow. Dude was eyeing him down. That's kind of That's crazy. So, yep, Tim's on the hill. Yeah. So Tim's in a good spot here because even if it goes hill, hill, he's breaking. Yeah, exactly. So. Uh, well. <clears throat> but. Yeah, we came up for, uh, came up here from... Palm Beach, so about two two hours, and just to hang out for an hour. You know, yeah. we came up for dinner and you know, and see everybody, and we're heading back here as soon as this match is over. <laughs> I gotta work at 9:30 in the morning, so. Uh -huh. <laughs> My girl's like, you wanna go out there? Are you crazy? I said, but babe, White Castle's waiting on us. <laughs> 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 yep, and she goes, here I am. So, all right, so the six uh, and the two are making things hard, so I can't really see him firing this ball in there. He yeah. might, might want to bank it to the bottom if rail. If the three wasn't back down. where it is, then he would probably just draw it. But yeah. And treetops a little tricky. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, Shane, it is. I, um, a lot of good things happening in Florida pertaining to pool now so anywhere in the central area you're you're in luck you know so many great things happening
So here I think you gotta go two rails under the one. Kick it, try to kick it past the five and get it on the end rail. So kick it onto the right side rail from our vantage point now? Yeah, kind of what he's looking at. Look okay. There, yeah. Cool. Kind of stick the key ball down where the one is. Yeah. Good shot. Did he make it? Wow, I thought he made it. Yeah, that was the only tough part about the shot oh, was... I believe he got. Wow. I'm saying it a little thin like he did, but mm -hmm. he... Yeah. I to hit him. Yeah. Um, the one rail, one or two rail kick is there for at least the hit. I don't know if he can get a big enough angle off the side rail to make the one. It is possible, yeah, but I don't... Do you think he can possibly spin into that angle to make the one? Yeah, but I don't think the two. I guess the two goes in the top corner. Yeah, can it get, did it get there? Yeah, Ooh, yeah. wow. Okay. Yeah, but wow. It, it was a little tricky because the side pocket blocked it a little bit. Uh -huh. but yeah. And again, with the two ball being where it is, I can see him trying to use that three ball for coverage. Yeah. Maybe the three, nine, four. He didn't quite have to jack up, but it might help him have to hit the shot a little bit easier to have a better control over the cue ball. I think he's sticking me on the six, it looks like. Oh, the six, okay. Okay, uh -huh. no. Yeah, that was the right shot. Okay, good shot. I can't really tell if the jump shot is there with him being able to bridge off of the rail. It'll be easier for him, but... Yeah, I think I, he's a little too close to the four to do that. Yeah. yeah. I don't know, looks like he's grabbing the jump mm -hmm. through that. Maybe? Yeah. It looks like he's got to get it up pretty quick. Yeah. Yeah, using that rail definitely makes it easier. Yeah, for sure. Great shot yeah, there. Really Man, he would have drilled it had that six not been there. <laughs> Great shot on that. Wow, he hit it good. And now, though, he kind of he opened up the two six. I mean, he still didn't make it easy, but at least they're not frozen like they were. So let's see how Tim can try to navigate this rack. It's tough because... Um, the, the two does go on the side, so if he right. kind of stun rifles this ball and goes right into the side rail and back out, pretty much almost to the line of the nine ball. He can essentially cut the two into the side where he's standing. He call, Did he call the nine ball, I think, just now? Hmm. That's surprising. So yeah, I heard him say nine ball. I, Is he trying to play um, it off the four? I don't know. I'd like oh. to see him just make this and go for the run out. He's good enough. So, right. you know, because if he can slow cut the two in the side, he has the six to help him get on the three. Yeah, and even if you get bet on two, just play safe. Uh-huh. So. Yeah. Oh. Oh. That was surprising. Yeah. Yeah, I'm really surprised he went through that. That was a really difficult shot. Yeah. So. And he created a little bit more of a challenge with the two six, especially with where the one in cue ball lay right now. Unless he can back cut the one into the side and go for the breakout. I don't know. He's going to play safe with yeah, Q on the back of the two. <laughs> right. Roll it down the two or the eight or something, yeah. yeah. Our viewers out there, in case y'all can't tell, I've got something against playing safe. I don't know what it is. <laughs> I don't think he has the angle to just roll up on the two, though. Looks like it, it's a little too low for that. I think he's on the rails. It's kind of hard to hold the key ball there. JM, you are a hundred percent correct. Okay, yeah, I like this shot. He's gonna call the nine and you just have to stick the one there and get behind the two. Uh, I would have aimed to hit that thick so that you can play the safe hit all thin, but yeah. you got away with it. Yep, so he can level out and just make sure you get past the six to get a good shot on the three after you make the two inside. Just 
Oh, the nine. Okay, so he's gonna try to. Okay, yeah. I think this is just kind of an insurance thing. He's yeah. not really trying to make the nine. Yeah, bank at the side. If he hit, hits it long, the nine's there. Right. Oh, never mind. Look at this guy. Oh. Yeah, he was just calling it just in case. He wasn't really trying to make it. He just okay. knew the cable was going that direction. Oh, good shot. Yeah, he hit it real good. So I think he can just go back and forth and play the four in the opposite corner of the three. Or he can freeze him behind the eight and try to send the Q three yeah. ball three rails. He must not be able to cut it yet. That's the right side. Just stick him right there. Yep. Oh. Yeah, so he's now left on, left on the jump shot. Oh. Oh. Something happened over there. I don't know if that was a match. There's no score on the scoreboard here on another stream table we have. So then if you hear any noise uh, coming through the stream, there was something going on on the end table. So somebody hit a shot. We heard the shot and the reaction, just didn't see it. <laughs> yeah, the manager's not been keeping score. I think, okay. I think it's the B side. Okay. Cool. Uh, yes. I don't know if it's the finals or not. Okay. So we got him behind the six pretty good. Um, jump and try to make it or jump safe? I mean, I personally just try, I don't really jump very well anyway. Jump bank? Yeah, something like that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the shape on the floor with it being a bar box, I guess it could be there. That's the only problem is yeah. the keyboard's going to go down tables. So you're never really going to get shot before. Uh -huh. yeah. yeah. But... I can't tell if the tangent line scratches past the five or not. Yeah, I can't tell either. If the five has the pocket blocked, I definitely like going for that. Yeah. He was playing just to hit the ball, basically. Okay. Wow. All right. So, um, I mean, the six doesn't go by the eight, so I'll have to figure out how to go from the five to the bottom side of the six. Uh, other than that, though, I'm just going Sorry for the noise if you guys hear it in the background. Yeah, sorry for Under Armour in our view. <laughs> there it is, okay. You said not to roll it. Yeah. He was trying to go into the nine a little thicker to hold it. Oh, okay. Yeah. He's got a pretty easy save. Draw, just connect the dots. Go. Uh, I don't like doing that. I like coming to the bottom, diamond to the right of the corner pocket. You know. I personally I, like just going two rails and tap it into the eight, and then if you hit a little, or even if you go between the eight, then you can shoot the six up table. Can he use low left and go right between the middle diamond and the diamond closest to him? Possibly. So I'm playing short side here. Just to look at the ball. See what yep. I mean? That's, that's, that's why, why I, didn't, I didn't like that at all. But see, if he would have hit that harder, he could have just tapped into the eight. And yeah. then it would have, he probably could have yeah. shot the six up table. That's why I kind of like just firing it more. Yeah. Kind of rolling the dice, but there's not really many places the keyboard could be bad. Mm -hmm. Did you get there? No. no. Uh, all right. All right. Yeah, I just don't like with that choice. It's just, man, that's really difficult to get it exactly there to get short side shape. On well, a nine footer, you have a lot more room, but mm -hmm. you, have to, you have to play so precise on seven footer.
just turn for a little bit. He's really worried about scratching that side. So. Yeah. Calling it all the way down. He should be able to make this though. Yeah. Very nice. That's awesome. Oh, good. Okay. Might take a break here. Yeah. So, yeah, we're going to take a couple minutes and they're going to come back. Uh, and uh, this is going to be for the championship. Tim has to beat David twice, which he just did the first time. And then they're going to be coming back. So, we will be right back with you guys. Stay tuned. Where are you from? Last 
got Sandy Ho Davis He's our present. Like his leg. All right, David said he promised him he could play pool a little bit. So he's going to show it this set. Hey guys, Gary G back here with you. Got my man Wesley White, aka the eight ball champion. Max Cash, Wesley. Yeah. One time Max Cash. Hey, it only takes one time. Then. Congratulations. We got a great final here. That was a uh, crazy first match there. Yeah, it was. Back and forth. Um, I got to say, David got, he got a, a, a bad roll getting behind that eight ball in that last shot. Right. But, uh, yeah, it's the nature of the beast. The rolls come and go for you. <laughs> but they both played good. They both made a couple, you know, glitches and... But uh, I expect another just yeah, nip the, and tuck the match. The bank Tim made him excited. That was a huge shot. That seven ball was, that was sick. A great shot, yeah. He's uh, Tim's playing well. Really, you can see he's feeling it. Kind of like when you were in your match, you were you were yeah, feeling. It. You were just you're at the table. You're like, I see it. See the shot. Shoot the shot. So it was really impressive. Uh, Dave Cottrell, obviously, uh, you know him. He's from your area. You guys play on the same team. What a tremendous. He comes with some big shots. Really knowledgeable. Yeah, he's been playing a long time. Yeah. <clears throat> I want to thank all you guys out there in the chat. I see Johnny Aguilera from Palm Beach, Jimmy Doyle, Shane Polshuk. He's been with us uh, throughout the whole tournament in and out. So we want to appreciate all you guys hanging out with us. Hit us up in the chat. If you need a ride, give Wesley a call. He might have he might have the night off. And once my car gets fixed. There you go. <laughs> what? Really? Yeah, I got rear ended when I was working. Oh no. Yeah. Oh yeah, you got in a car accident, that's right. That's brutal. Oh, don't oh, no, don't hit the scratch. Don't he's no, good. No, yeah, but I think he was trying to go two rails under it. Yeah, I, I feel like I would have tried to go 
but he hit it with a good pace that he hit, it turned out really well. So. I don't know if he can jump it or not. No, he's got the. He's looking oh. for a kick. Okay, I think the six has the jump, jump block. So. I almost like kicking to the side row on the left, the big angle. Uh, you can come into the three full and you have a good chance of making it. Yeah, this is tough because you really got to bend it with draw, looks like. Mm hmm. See if we can get there. We go. Thank you, Kyle, for the uh, camera angle. Yeah, I like going to the right here. It wouldn't hurt to call the nine just in case you catch the, th the three full or funny. And it crosses over. And the eight might be kind of a backboard thing, so. <coughs> We've got uh, Bill Eisenhardt in the background, come down from Carolinas to play some singles and hang with his buddy Tim. Nice hit. Got a reward. Made the eight ball. I don't know if the three passes is nine, he might have to just play the combo. Oh yeah, very nice. Hit that really he hit it clean too. Yeah, he might go draw under and play on the side or he can just go forward and play in the corner. He's got some options. Yeah, probably better just play in the corner. Yeah, he didn't hit any uh, low on that. He just <laughs> center ball kind of came straight across. But he's been pocketing balls pretty well, so he feels comfortable just uh, taking the shot that is given to him. Uh, just to punch the stroke. He's a little quick. Yeah, trying to force it. Yeah. Not good, but he put the nine ball in a bad spot. So what do you do here, Wesley? Do you thin it, come up, come up and back? I would probably go up and down. And then play, inside, play, play the yeah. six up in the upper left? Yeah, the opposite corner. Maybe. Yeah, okay. Because uh, I think he's a mall. He could spin it around, but it's, it's a little tough to do that. I like the inside shot. I think... Uh, Makes making the five easier. It's not he hit that ball really good. Mm -hmm. get it's it's hard because you're coming across your line. Oh, wow. He might be able to. I think he's good there. Yeah, I think he'll be able to straight inside. Mm -hmm. Playing the side. Playing the side. Of course, I'm playing the side. Okay, I'll ask you a question. Oh, I'm shooting the side, yeah. Uh, that's what I want. Okay, that's good. Oh, I'm sorry. Can you watch this? Oh, yeah. Okay. Do you want It's a little fortunate to be able to get the uh, six on the side there, but nonetheless, wins the rack. So I guess it's one to nothing. We also have uh, the men's B division finals getting started over on table 60. It is a uh, repeat match of the hot seat. We have Terrell Morgan. Versus Kevin Delgado. OK, 
Kevin has to beat uh, Trail twice. Let's look at the first drive break here. Wow. Which is surprising because this table's been springing a leak. <laughs> you know, it's funny though, it's like um, for some people, the whole match dry. And then some other matches, two, three balls every time. Right. And it's like, so I hit them hard. It's just really kind of like where they were, if they were breaking from the side, they were coming up dry. Breaking from uh, just a diamond off the rail, crushing it, making a couple balls. It's like weird. He's got the jump cue. Obviously hooked, so. Which is pretty risky when you can push out right after the break. But he wants to take uh, control of the match here. Oh, well. That's not going to do it. <laughs> We're looking at it. <laughs> it's coming away from us. <laughs> I'm looking for you. Dude. I know. The angle that we were looking at just as you folks were, we're thinking the ball just come right to our feet and actually went the other way. All right, so let's so get that other camera angle. Thank you, Kyle. Just got to hit it soft. He doesn't want to let the two ball get away from him. Right, we don't want to help on top of five. Kind of like that. Yeah, even that's kind of tricky now. Yeah, now he's in a bad spot to uh, get back up table for the three. Actually, you know what? Played off the five and draw it straight back. Right, yeah, I like that shot. Four here. He tried to force in a queen. Yeah. He got the ball back. I mean, he yeah, he really punched his stroke there. Yeah. He was a little quick on his backswing. Yep. Can't tell if he can draw that and get uh, yeah, just above that side pocket close to him. Yeah, it looks a little. It's one of those you gotta hit it soft with it and make sure that the cue all grabs with the draw. But I don't think uh, he's in a position for it. I think he can pinch draw it. Shouldn't be out of corner. Oh, he's going four with left, I think. Yeah, he's gonna try to go three rails. Man, did he. Are you kidding me? How good did he hit that freaking shot? He knew it as soon as he hit it, too. Yeah, he overstepped it a little bit, but it's still <laughs> kind of unlucky to hit a center pocket. Yeah, and he caught the bottom rail where the three is. That cue ball is back down here by the four ball. Right. Because he really, he put a stroke on that yeah. shot. And I get it, you know, you want to really, you got to let the stroke out. You want to make sure you hit the ball clean. Right. So yeah, that was a tricky shot for sure. That was a beautiful shot, though. I mean, he hit it like a dream. He just overhit. Big opportunity for Tim here to uh, hold serve here. You know, you, it's, when you're an alternate break, you cannot afford to lose a game on your break. Yep. Yeah, Shane, you said it. It was an unlucky, beautiful shot. Well, Tim's in good position here to. Uh, Get this rack. Go between the six and seven. Nothing crazy. Yeah, it's okay. Definitely came down a little farther than he wanted. So what's the room you guys are playing out of? Q's and uh, is that Marietta? Yeah, Terry Stewart owned it. Okay, nice room. Yeah. How many tables? Let's see. Let's see, there's... Let's 16 nine footers in there. There are Kim Steels. Not many okay. places have Kim Steels, but he's got a few diamonds in there too. Uh oh. Uh oh. He sure wow. did. Wow. That's surprising. He did not. He he got to put a little bit of left on that. Right. Yeah. So that it widens out. Correct. So 16 nine footers. Beautiful. Uh, yeah. There's pretty good. He, I mean, Terry likes to gamble for sure. Yeah. Okay. He's got. He plays. Um. He's got a. Like a 
nine foot diamond four inch pockets, and Ooh. then he's got a uh, gold crown four inch pocket. So, Ooh, so he's got good. two tough action tables. Right, he likes to play one pocket on the Brunswick for sure. Okay, nice. Yeah. And then great. full um, bar food. Yeah, food is actually pretty good. Nice, you know. Yeah. That's good. That, may, that makes a big deal, you know. The wings are actually good. They're nice and big. They don't, they don't jip out on you. Beautiful. I'm all, I'm all about it. Right. That's my thing. When I, I go to a pool room, I gauge it by their food. <laughs> and then their tables. Yeah, exactly. You know? All right, let's see David with the break here. That was unfortunate for him, but uh, I guess you could say it kind of came full circle. Six ball down. He can cut the one in. Go to the bottom, come back up for the two. Four is going to be tough. I think he might be able to play it off the nine on the side. I mean, honestly, if you can get straight on the two, you roll up for the three nine. That's true. And, and it kind of leaves that way because you got to cut the one to the side. The cue ball comes down towards us. Yeah. If it's straight, shut the problem. Just a, a pinch it inside left here. Yeah. Just like this. Just like this. Yep, perfect. That's textbook. Roll forward about six, eight inches. Three nine combo. Call it a day. Yeah, he did an exaggerated Steve Miserak head kick on the end there. Oh, wow. That was beautifully done there by Dave. He's on the hill, folks. 3-0. Going to four. This is the second set. He said he was going to show they can play pool a little bit. So. I'll tell you what. He has definitely done that. Yeah, it's going to be tough to fade that alternate break. It is. Sure. I mean, I've seen a few matches where it's uh, reversed. You know, you know, a perfect example, Jeff Hooks. He's up 3-0 on a guy who loses. Right, and Jeff Hooks plays. I mean, he's a good player. Yeah, he plays pretty solid. So, you know, it's like, even good players. It's like, what the hell just happened before you know it? A couple funny rolls. And so, I'll tell you, um, watching David, I mean, it's just, you can see his knowledge. He plays very good, but he definitely wears his emotions on the sleeve. Yes. Like, he doesn't. You know exactly how he feels about the shot when he shoots. Yeah, he told me in the bathroom he was pretty tilted after he missed the eight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he was a little bit on, uh, yeah. You know, if he had a cheaper key, he might have cracked it. <laughs> he says, this one's a little too expensive. I don't know, I'm not going to crack this one, but I, I want to. Yeah, his wife probably wouldn't be too happy with that. Yeah. I mean, I, and I feel his pain. I mean, you know, we all do. It's like, oh. God, how did I just do that? Yeah. Beautiful shot, don't scratch on him, always give him a chance. Tied up the eight ball. But yeah, but if he gets... Should be able to get it out with the six. Yeah, maybe. if you get... Yeah, you should be able to break that open. Make the four roll up. Zach, he missed. Yeah, I think the fatigue starts to set in. Yeah, it's been a long day. Thinking, yeah. It's been a long night for uh, for everybody. Big opportunity for Dave to close out the match right here. And he'd like to go out with a bang. A 4 0 shutout in the f to win this one. So, uh, last year's uh, champion uh, was also from your area, Bobby Stovall. Oh, yeah, he's a great player. Yeah. So, you guys are uh, really making a showing for uh, the great shot there. I like the way you shot that, too. Yeah, That's exactly how I was thinking about that shot. Right. But uh, your Atlanta area is making a strong statement for uh, the West Coast Challenge here. That's my first time out here, so. Which I find that kind of hard to believe, but that's uh, pretty cool. Yeah, none of us were going to come out, and then one of our teammates convinced us. So. 
Well, it's paying off. Yeah. Literally. <laughs> right. Now, here's the tricky part. Because he's, he's got to jack up here. Right. He's off the road, be pretty easy. Yeah. yeah. He's, he's a really solid player. I don't think he's an issue. You kind of have to a little bit. Yeah. You don't know how you're going to hit that 8-4 or not. Right. He actually has a two-way. I'm liking banking the 8, the upper left, and playing the carom on the 9. Right. Yeah. He's not really safe here. I think you got to go for something. Yeah. And you know what? Taking a shot at the 9. Then you really got to dig into the draw on this if you're going to play the carom because it's pretty far away now that I'm looking at the nine wall. Definitely not easy. He's going to call it though, so. I think he's kind of playing safe too. He played the bank for Two way. Right. Watch the scratch. No, oh, that's going to. Oh, yeah. very well. He was in a tricky spot there. Yeah, he was. Yeah, really get on the on the rail is kind of what made it really difficult. If he was off the rail, it would have been a lot easier to break out the eight. Correct. Yeah, being that, yeah, when he shot the six, yeah, it made it tough to dig into the cue ball and generate enough power and draw and all that stuff. Well, you know, sometimes this is how the momentum swings right here. Right. You know, Tim gets the game. Now, if it would be huge if Tim wins this game on right. David's break and then can win on his break, it gets him back on the hill. Right. So. Yeah. We're kind of about all hill hill when we're here behind the monitor because, you know, I ain't sweating so bad over here. Pressure ain't bad on me exactly. watching hill hill. Yeah, I got no action on it either. So. <laughs> well, Wesley, we certainly appreciate you hanging out with us and, and coming in the booth and, you know, calling the game with us. It's, it's nice to have an extremely knowledgeable player like yourself coming in here. Of course, you've been around the game enough to know what's going on. I'm just lucky Justin can't play. <laughs> he said you played real good against him in Tallahassee. Steal this game. You know, it's the momentum swinging a little bit. You know, the one ball doesn't go anywhere, but he's got a nice safety here. So, what do you think about a safety here? Are you playing the 1 6 combo yeah. or what are you playing? I, th I think the 1 6 is kind of tricky because he's got to cut it a little bit. Mm -hmm. So, it's kind of hard to just hold the one there. So, this yeah. is what I'm thinking of is thinning the one, putting the one between the 1 6, I mean, the 6 and the rail. Right. And try to get that cue ball down, maybe pull it a 7 9, or even come all the way across the table. Yeah, he would have liked to hit that harder. It's not uh, that difficult of a hit now. Yeah. They are playing 3 fouls, so he's got to make a hit at some point. Mm -hmm. but I think it's soft to spin it. Right, that's what I say. Yeah. It's not super difficult. Right. It's not a hanger, but. Very hittable. I expect him to make a good hit here. Yeah, he's got spin it around the table. Beautiful. Hit the good. Well, Tim can. Um, oh, he's asking me to watch the hit. Hang. to really play the one. It's too hard to avoid the double hit. The spin behind six, maybe? Okay. Not about any scratch. Okay.
Oh, that got a little scary. He was still. Uh, I'm right in the drink. I know. It was good speed the way he played that shot. Oh, that's a great shot. That this a is a good one. shot too. He might have hit a little too high. But still, you're you're frozen on the rail. Not an easy shot here at all. You want to have to shoot when your man's on. Your plane's on the hill. It's hard to tell from here if he can cut it aside. Mm -hmm. Looks like nope. He's gonna jump and probably play it for the side. All right. He went for the corner. He might get the upper corner. Back. Oh, man, you got a reward. All right. He's yeah. him. Hey, you make a legitimate good jump and you make contact. Right. You get rewarded sometimes. And it's funny because Dave knew it. He started snapping, knowing that it was going to go that way. He just felt, you know what? That's just the way it's going to go. Right. He's just going to make sure not to get the angle to go towards the 7. He wants to get the angle. Or straight in will be fine too. Yeah, like there. You don't really want this angle. Yeah, not the uh, ideal place you want to be. Right. He, yeah, he's got too much angle to come down and then come up between the 7, 6, 2 rails. Yeah, that's why bar tables are tricky. You really got to play precise <coughs> with your cue ball. Mm-hmm. Now he's looking to draw between the six and seven with a lot of spin, and then when he comes back out, right. try to get it above the side pocket. You should be able to. Oh, he got the position. Yeah, he had plenty of room. Just kind yep. of punch it a little bit. Well, you know what? Didn't leave Dave a, an easy shot. Dave has a really good safety built in here. Yeah. If he wants to do that. He's either going to roll up behind the 7 or spin behind the 9 ball, one of the two. Yeah, I like going to go behind the 9, one, right. uh, personal preference, but it goes, it goes two ways. You're never going to leave a shot, really. Right. And it's a little bit easier. I hit that real good. Throws <laughs> yeah. it on it. Yeah. yeah, he hit that Filipino good. <laughs> when you freeze it, when you do that and you freeze him, you hit a Filipino good. He plays a little one pocket. <laughs> no, you don't say. <laughs> One pocket action up by you guys. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, nice. Yeah, I think you could go two rounds here. I, oh. hit it, I try to hit it fairly soft and try to just stick it behind the seven. Exactly. Because it doesn't go past yeah. the six. Yeah, I like uh, I like going this way myself too. Yeah, I don't, I don't think you just fire it. I think you gotta basically just make a legal shot. Mm-hmm. Yeah, at least get yourself through this inning here. Right. Or if it's a little thin, you can go back into the six. So right. He's got pretty good opportunity to really get safe if he hits it. Yeah, absolutely. You can. Uh, there's a lot of good things that could happen for him if he just makes a good hit. I went three rows. Okay, yeah. That's not bad, shot either. That's not bad. You got a lot of separation. But he left him a, sh a very makeable shot mm -hmm. here. I, uh, I feel Dave can actually hit this with him. He can turn his stroke loose now. Mm -hmm. And he's got a nice stroke. Really moves the cue ball. So now he can really kind of let that out with a nice draw stroke here. Just like that. Oh, he sure. did. He would have loved to have got another six inches out of that one. Good, though, yeah, I felt like he hit it real good. As soon as he struck it, I thought he hit it perfect. Speaking of Jeff Hooks, he just walked in the room. <laughs> Two rails get behind the six seven with a safety. No, oh, watch this. It's good, but that scratch sometimes comes into play. He looked ahead, but he didn't really leave much. He's probably going to try to do the same thing right back at him. Yeah, I mean, that's the shot. I 
reason to try to force something that isn't there. Just play the safe. Scratch. Oh, wow. That's brutal. He just hit it a little too hard, but. Yeah, like you say, I feel that he hit it a little thick. Yeah, just slightly. Mm -hmm. yeah, I think he's trying to go down to the bottom now. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, I tell you, uh, Dave has the golden opportunity to close out the set and become the nine ball champion here. To basically roll up, give yourself a little more distance on the six. Stun it over for the seven, and you're golden. He's laughing because he didn't want to get straight on the six. Yeah, it was like literally the only spot where he didn't want to get, but he's fine. 